back in the little room again. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Good morning, Judy. All right, good morning. All right, do we have any preliminary matters before? Okay. Sure. All right, are we ready for the jury then? Yes, sir. Okay.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. All right, your next witness. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Depp calls Officer Tyler Haddon. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the first part of the testimony you will hear is questioning uh, by Ms. Hurd's counsel, and then we'll let you know when Mr. Depp's counsel takes over the question. All right, thank you. By deposition, thank you. Please state your name and your business address. Tyler Adden. 1546 West Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Sir, what is your occupation? I'm a police officer for the city of Los Angeles. And how long have you been a police officer with the city of Los Angeles? Approximately five and a half years. Did you serve in any law enforcement capacity prior to coming to the LAPD? No. When you said approximately five and a half years, do you recall approximately you started employment with the LAPD? Uh, approximately November of 2015. Did you attend the police academy prior to November 2015 or did you attend it after you became employed by the LAPD You're on in November a of 2015. Can we turn that I began volume? the academy in 2015, that November. That volume's a little loud. Thank you. And how long were you with the academy? Approximately six months. And when did you start as a patrol officer with the LAPD? Uh, six months after November. Can you recall your date when you started patrol? I don't recall the exact date, no. And that would be May, end of May of 2016? Correct. And was the first training officer that you worked with on patrol, Melissa Science? Yes. Question, when did you first have body-worn video assigned to you? I'm not sure of the exact date. Approximately when? Approximately three months into working patrol. So maybe during the summertime. The summer of 2016? Correct. When you started working with Melissa Science as your training officer, did Officer Science have body video? Not at the time I worked with her. How much training did you have on domestic violence while you were at the academy? I don't recall the exact amount of time. Approximately how much? 20 hours, approximately. Okay. So just to make sure that I understand, because we had a few disjointed questions and answers. So it was your understanding as of May 2016 that if you answered a call for domestic violence and there was evidence of a crime, even if the victim did not want to press charges, that you had to take a report. Is that correct? If there's evidence of a crime, yes. So, so your best recollection today is that you had been on patrol as a probationary officer somewhere between a week and three weeks before answering the May 21, 2016 domestic violence call at Eastern Columbia building, is that correct? Correct. Do you recall any of the other incidents that you reported to that evening of May 21st, 2016? No. At all, any part of them? Nope. So, this was new for you working with officer science, is that correct? Correct. And as the probationary officer, then you would defer to officer science, is that fair? Correct. And if you could just describe to me what your understanding of officer science role was to you as your training officer in May 2016. 
to teach me and um, guide me in how to become a um, complete the duties of being a law enforcement officer. Uh, officer Haddon, uh, under your understanding of the LAPD rules in 2016, if a victim of domestic violence said that the altercation was only verbal, would you, would that require you to write a report? No. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to take a look at the first page of what has been marked as deposition exhibit number one. It's had number, back to number three, my apologies. Um, and this is an incident recall. Do you, what is your understanding of what this document is, Officer Haddon? Uh, it's essentially what is given to us on uh, our computer. And, and, and what do you mean is given to us on our computer? In our car. Right, so what happens? So when we're assigned a radio call, the radio call comes to our computer in our car. And this is what we see on our screen, but in, okay. a, in a different format. Now, how was this particular call characterized by the dispatch, at least initially? Initially, it was dispatched as a uh, domestic radio call. Okay. And what does domestic radio call mean to you? That there's some type of, whether it's disagreement all the way up to a, a violent crime that's occurred between two people that are in some type of relationship or have some children in common. So Officer Haddon, this comes out into the system and it's accessible by all of the LAPD black and whites that are on patrol that night, correct? Yes, whoever is logged in and working that night, I could look up any division's radio calls if I wanted to. And then it has next, it has a DS and then ER after stat. What does that mean? DS means dispatched. ER means we're en route. So at 8.46 and 37 seconds PM, your vehicle was en route to 8.49 South Broadway, correct? Correct. Do you recall how far away you were? I do not recall. And then it says primary unit PD1A1-W3. What is that? That's my call assignment. So the PD is police department. 1A1 is my car assignment. W3 means I work watch three. Okay. Then we have at 2057, which is 8.57 p.m., that is AS, what does that mean? At scene, like we're there. All right, so you, so you arrived at the scene at 8.57 p.m., correct? Correct. What did you do then? Um, we walked to the location. Do you recall anything that you did before you went up to the penthouse? Uh, we walked in and met with security who showed us where the elevator was. Did you do anything else? Not that I recall. Um, but your best recollection is that you went in, you talked to security, and then you went on an elevator, is that right? Yes. Do you recall what time you arrived at the apartment? penthouse no I don't, I don't recall. all right then your next entry here is 21 22 so that would be 9 22 p.m. and 57 seconds yeah okay. met with victim check lock verified the last location victim advised verbal do you see that mm -hmm. Who wrote that? that's what we write when we put the comments of the call of what happened in the radio call, that's what we wrote. So do you recall whether that was you that wrote that or Officer Sainz? Um, I don't recall who wrote it. All right. 
And, and so you were back in your vehicle by 922, is that correct? Approximately, yeah. Well, if you wrote this at 922, would it be fair to say you were back in your vehicle writing this? Yes. Okay. Um, now, did you take a report? Uh, we issued a business card. I asked, did you take a report? No. Why not? Because the victim didn't request a report and during our investigation, we didn't reveal that we need to take a report. So who decided to use the words victim advised verbal dispute? The whoever created the comments of the call used the word victim. Whoever gave the comments of the call gave used the word victim. So I don't know who that was. And I'm even more specifically asking who chose the language advised verbal dispute. It was either my partner or I, I don't recall who. Now, what is the significance of writing down verbal dispute? We're writing what happened, what we believe is happening, what we, our investigation revealed. But you were not present at any time when Ms. Hurd discussed whether there was any type of verbal argument. Is that correct? Was I there? Yes. Was I speaking to her? No. Was there any discussion of verbal argument in your presence in when you were up in the, the penthouse investigating? Not that I recall. And you did not hear Ms. Hurd say that it was only a verbal dispute, correct? I did not. Now, I asked you a little earlier if it's a verbal dispute, whether that triggers having to write a report. And you indicated that it is not. Am I accurately characterizing that? Correct. Okay. Now, here, in addition to the victim advised verbal dispute, says and refused to give any further information. You see that? Yes. Question. Okay. So the victim does not want to press charges and, and advises that it's a verbal dispute, then that would not trigger you writing a report. Is that your understanding of LAPD? Policies and procedures on domestic violence at that time. Correct. There are other circumstances that were also within this incident as well. What do you mean by that? During our investigation, we had other reasons to believe that this was true. I'm sorry. During your investigation, you had other reasons to believe what was true. That it was a verbal dispute. And what did you have during your investigation that created in your mind evidence that it was only a verbal dispute? After discussing the investigation with my partner at the scene, the Ms. Hurd refused any medical treatment and had no visible injuries. There was no sign of struggle. And the victim or correction, the witness that was there that I spoke with was uncooperative as well. Anything else? At this time, that's all. Okay. Now, you recall seeing that Ms. Hurd was in tears and was crying and red faced. Would you agree? Correct. From a distance. Well, from a distance, Ms. Hurd was in tears, crying and had a red face. Correct? Correct. Why did you issue a business card? It's part of our policy. We're supposed to issue a business card. And it shows that we are there and completed an investigation. And if she would like us to come back, we offered that assistance that we can come back at another time if she feels like she needs us to come back. Did you take any notes at all? 
notes of what? Notes during the time that you were investigating this call? No. Did you take any notes after you got back down to your car about the call? No. Did you take any pictures? No. Did you record anything? No. Would it be fair to say that on 5-21-2016 at 9-22 p.m., you and your training officer, Science, considered this incident closed? I said, yes, that is correct. At that time, we pressed enter and the call went off my screen, meaning it was completed. Did you ever have anything come up on your screen again relating to this incident that evening? Not that I recall. All right. At the time that you closed out this incident on your screen at 9-22 on 5-21-2016, did you know that this call involved Johnny Depp? No. Did you, at the time that you closed this out on your screen, were you, did you recognize Amber Heard? No, I had no idea who she was. And is it fair to say that you considered these people to be, quote, just citizens, end of quote? That's correct. Do you have any communications at all with Officer Gatlin or his, his patrol partner the night of May 21st, 2016? No, not that I recall. So the next thing we're going to go to is the CAD summary, which is at page 12 of exhibit number three. And this is a CAD summary report, and it also has the name DFAR report at the top, and it's for 5-21-2016, and says specifically officers Haddon and officer Sines. Do you see that? Yes. Typically, when you would arrive for your shift, was there a period of time that you would do things maybe at the, at the precinct or whatever before you get into your vehicle and log on and go forward? Yes. All right. What and then go and find out if there's any radio calls pending. Okay. And so how long would it typically take for you to do all those things from putting your uniform on through the time you start checking for radio calls? Um, I'm not sure. Approximately an hour. How many people, how many police officers, patrol officers, were part of that that roll call i don't know the exact number i'd say approximately 30. Okay. and when you said you had to stand in line to check out your equipment was it all 30 of those patrol officers that would get in line and check out their equipment yes and supervisors okay um and what equipment were you checking out that night uh a shotgun, a less lethal shotgun, uh, mics for our cameras inside the car, pouches for our mics, batteries for our radios, keys for the cars, taser. Um, I think that's about it right now. Do you have a recollection of there being cameras inside your car back on May 21, 2016? Yes, I believe so. Now, when you arrived at the penthouse, you saw that there was a female holding and embracing Ms. Hurd, correct? I believe it was uh, when I was leaving the location, when we were getting ready to leave. Okay. Now, you believed that Ms. Hurd was 
uncooperative because she was being emotional, crying, was refusing, uh, she was hurt, and she didn't know initially whether she wanted to file a report or not, and then she didn't want to file a report, correct? Correct. Now, you said that Officer Sonic told you later that Ms. Hurd called the number on the business card. Do you recall when Officer Sonic told you that Ms. Hurd called the number on the card? No, I don't recall. Do you recall approximately how much time you spent at the penthouse speaking with either the mail or with Ms. Hurd or looking at the premises that night? I don't recall right now. Do you recall roughly whether it was 15 minutes, a half hour, hour? I don't recall. I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 17. I'll just scroll down so you can see that. Do you recognize the person in this photo? I believe that's Ms. Hurd. All right. Is this the same person you saw on the night of May 21st, 2016 when you arrived sometime after 9.04 p.m.? And do you recall seeing the red marks that are reflected on this exhibit number 17 on Ms. Hurd? No, I was never this close to be able to examine her face. You were never close enough to Ms. Hurd to be able to examine her face? Is that what you said? Correct. Okay. If you had seen this mark close enough to be able to see it, would you have believed you had an obligation to prepare a report? No, because I don't know what this is from. Would you agree it's a red mark on her face? From what I saw was red from her crying. There was no red marks from any other thing that was consistent with her crying. Does this look like a red mark that's from crying? Officer Patton, in reviewing this picture, does it appear that there's an injury on Ms. Hurd's face in this picture? No. You would say that doesn't evidence an injury? No. Why not? Because I don't see an injury. I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 18. Do you recognize this carpeting? No. Officer Patton, what do you see in this picture? I see stripes with some type of stains on to be a possible flooring. Okay. Do you have a recollection of seeing stains on the flooring outside of Ms. Hurd's penthouse that night of May 21, 2016? At this point, not that I recall. And when you say at this point, not that you can recall, what do you mean by that? It's five years ago. I don't remember. Officer Patton, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Patton exhibit number 19. Do you recognize the business card? Yes. And tell me what you can recall of that. Well, that's my handwriting, and those are our LAPD business cards. All right. The next thing on there is refused report. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Was it your understanding that Ms. Hurd did not want to press charges? She spoke with my partner, and that's what my partner advised me. Okay. Were you ever in the room when Ms. Hurd either, quote, refused report or refused to press charges? I believe we offered her one final chance before we gave her the business card if she needed medical treatment or a report, and she declined at that time, and that's when we issued this business card. And what did you mean by report? An official investigative report. Is that the victim's choice to write, whether you write an official investigative report? 
Yeah. Uh, a citizen can re ask for a report for anything, essentially, with LAPD. But do you have an obligation as an LAPD patrol officer to write a report if you see injuries or property damage? If there's evidence of a crime, yes. And when you say if there's evidence of a crime, would injuries and property damage constitute evidence of a crime? If there's evidence of a crime, yes. Okay. Is there something different about what you're saying than what I'm asking? Well, I'm trying to understand when I say if you see evidence of injuries and property damage, is that evidence of a crime in your mind? Yes, if the person didn't commit, do it themselves. I mean, I, I can damage my own property and it's not a crime. Okay. Did you have any reason to believe that Amber Heard created any injuries to herself or to uh, the property at the time you were there on May 21st, 2016? No, I don't recall seeing any damaged property or her obtaining any injuries or having visible injuries that I saw. Now it says advised can call at later time if changes mind. What if any discussion did you have with officer signs about what that meant? Well, that goes with what I said earlier was a citizen can make a report about anything at any time. It's called an investigative report or just an incident report. So if she wanted a report, then she would call us back and we'll take a report. But at that point, you have already written into your system that the victim advised verbal dispute only, correct? Correct. And you did not write a report or take pictures or uh, create any kind of record, did you, of anything that transpired there? Uh, just the business part. I'm going to ask you... Officer Haddon, to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 24. Do you recognize the person in this picture? Miss Heard? Well, do you recognize her as Miss Heard? Um, not, no, I have no idea who she was. Do you recognize the person in this picture on Haddon exhibit number 24 as the person who was the the subject of your and officer signs uh, reporting to the Eastern Columbia building that evening. Correct. All right. So let's go to uh, exhibit number 24. Um, and do you, what do you see in this picture with respect to whether there is any injury depicted on Ms. Hurd? I see a uh, female white, fair skin with a uh, cheek. I'm sorry, with a what? Pink cheek and pink eyes. All right. Do you recognize that as a potential injury on her face? I'm knowing what our investigation revealed. No, it's that pink's consistent with Brian. What do you mean by what your investigation revealed? That it was a verbal dispute. And she refused that she had any injury. And just so we're clear again, you were never in the presence of Ms. Heard when she at any time said it was only a verbal dispute, correct? Correct. Now, would you, as a police officer investigating, if you saw this, what's depicted in this picture, would you believe that you need to investigate further? Uh, I, yeah, I would need additional information. Uh, just because I see a female with pink cheeks and pink eyes doesn't mean that something happened. They could be, right. sad, they should be sad and crying that their dog died. Did you engage in any further investigation? No, the only investigation I did was part of speaking to my partner and then 
uh, speaking with the witness. With the witness, the next door neighbor. And what did you discuss with the witness, the next door neighbor? Uh, I tried to obtain information of what occurred. What did you ask? Uh, who, what, when, where, why? And what did he say? Uh, I don't remember his exact words, but he wasn't very coming with uh, the information. I had very vague, vague information as far as what he was telling me. What do you specifically recall the witness telling you? I don't recall. You don't recall at all? I don't re recall specific words or sentences. Do you recall the witness uh, taking you around and showing you property damage in the penthouse? No, I recall my partner and I doing a protective sweep and that's it. You don't recall Josh Drew being with you and taking you through? I don't the... recall. I don't recall if someone else was with us or not. Do you recall one way or the other? I, I don't recall. All right. Now, you have a recollection of you and, and Officer Science going through the entire penthouse, is that correct? We did a protective sweep of the location that she was at. Tell me what you mean by protective suite. We walked through the general housing area that she is at to make sure that there's no one else in there that shouldn't be there or there's no, you know, no, no one hurt. Do you recall how many rooms you went through? No, no, I don't. I'm going to ask you if the officer had to take a look at number 25. Do you recognize this as Ms. Hurd? Yes. All right. And do you see any injuries depicted on this picture? No. I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 26. Do you recognize this as Ms. Hurd? Yes. Okay. Do you see any injuries in this picture? On this no. I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, exhibit number 27, do you recognize this as Ms. Hurd? Yes. And do you see any injuries uh, in this picture on Ms. Hurd? No. I'm going to ask the same questions. Officer Haddon, uh, I'm going to ask you to look at Haddon exhibit number 28, do you recognize this as Ms. Hurd? Yes. And do you see any injuries depicted on Ms. Hurd's face in this picture? No. I'll show you exhibit number 29. Do you recognize this as Ms. Hurd? Yes. Do you see any injuries on Ms. Hurd in this picture? No. Now, you indicated that you and Officer Signs uh, went through the apartment, correct? C correct. We did a protective sweep. Protective sweep. And in doing the protective sweep, you did go in the room, correct? Uh, I mean, I don't know exactly where we went, but we walked around what she claimed was her living quarter. Would you agree that if Ms. Hurd displayed injuries at the time that you reported to her residence after the domestic violence call, that you would have had an obligation to prepare a report? If there was uh, injuries or a complaint of pain, yes. I, I'm sorry, injuries or what? Complaint of pain. Would you agree that uh, if Ms. Hurd displayed injuries that you perceived to be injuries at the time you reported to Ms. Hurd's residence after the domestic violence call on May 21st, 2016, you had an obligation to, re to prepare a report? If I perceived them to be injuries, then yes. Okay. Would you agree that if there was property damage present at the time you reported to Ms. Hurd's residence after the domestic violence calls, you had an obligation to prepare a report? No, because if she's living there, that's her property, and she's being uncooperative and doesn't say that uh, someone else did it or anyone else did it, then I have no other information to go off of. She could have broken it herself. Officer Haddon, did you provide any pamphlets to Ms. Hurd, you or Officer Signs, relating to domestic violence? Uh, I personally did not. Do you know whether Officer Signs did? I don't know. 
And ladies and gentlemen, at this point, counsel for Mr. Depp takes over the question. Did you see Ms. Hurd's face on the evening of May 21, 2016? Yes. On how many occasions did you see her face? I believe two. And the first time you saw her face, uh, how close to her were you? Uh, I don't recall exactly. I think it was approximately 10 feet. Did you perceive any, uh, did, did you have any um, problems with your eyesight at that time? No. Did you have 2020 vision as of May 21, 2016? Uh, no, I, I wear contacts though, so I can't see. Perfectly fine. Were you wearing your contacts that evening? Yes. Did you have any trouble uh, seeing the contours of her face the first time you saw her that evening? No. Did you perceive any signs of injury on her face or anywhere else on her body that was visible to you? No. For how long a period did you view her face the first time you saw her that night? A few seconds, not very long. And how much later was the second time you saw Ms. Hurd? Right before we left. And how close to her were you when you observed her face? Approximately 10 feet. Did you have a clear view of her face? Yes. Did you still have your contacts in at the okay. time? Yes. Was there sufficient light that enabled you to actually see her face? I believe so. I, I believe it was uh, the light was a little dimmer, but it was still lit. Did you perceive any signs of injury to her face on that second occasion? No. Did you see any swelling of any kind on her face, either do during the first time you saw her or the second time you saw her that night? No. Did you see any marks on her face, either the first time you observed her that night or the second time you observed her? Just the redness, for, which was consistent with her crying. Did you, did you see any time that night, any indication of any bruising on her face? No. Did you see at any time that evening any, any indication or any sign whatsoever of any injury to her face? No. And going to your, was it the security? What was the term you used? Uh, the security sweep, is that correct? The protective sweep? Protective sweep. Um, during your protective sweep, was your access barred to any part of the pet house? My access what? Sorry. Uh, did you have free access uh, to to the pet house? The the witness that was there, he kind of, I believe, he guided us kind of through the place. Uh, I don't know. You know, what, where he guided us through. Did you see any broken glass anywhere in the penthouse where you did the protective sweep? Not that I remember. Were you looking for any signs of a disturbance? Yes. Why were you looking for signs of a possible disturbance? Um, signs of or any evidence that a crime has occurred. Is that part of, is that standard procedure, a police procedure? Yes. And why do you look for potential signs of, of vandalism or disturbance to property in the course of a domestic violent, uh, violence allegation or possibility? Um, just because that tends to happen when uh, um, a some type of domestic um, alter altercation occurs between two people. Did you see any sign of any kind of property damage or vandalism that evening? Not that I recall. 
did you see any signs of spilled wine on the floor? Not that I recall. If they were visible or a complaint of pain. Do you recall some questioning from Ms. Hurd's counsel, Ms. Bredehoft, about a man who led you through the penthouses on the evening of May 21, 2016? Yes. Did you describe him as uncooperative? Yes. Let me ask another question. Was he cooperative with your inquiries that evening? No. What do you mean by that? I attempted to gather information of who the husband was and what occurred and where he possibly went so we could interview kind of all the different parties. And he wouldn't even give me a name of who the husband was. And how long did you interact with that person who, in fact, is Josh Drew? I'd say approximately five to ten minutes. Did he report to you in words or substance that any domestic violence had occurred? I don't recall any exact verbiage he said. Did he report to you in words or substance any vandalism? No, not that I recall. On the evening that you and your partner got a call to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, were you and your partner in a particular hurry to close out this incident? No. Were you willing to stay as long as was necessary to resolve the matter? Yes. Would you generally take notes for a verbal dispute only? When we disclose the call and we get rid of the call, we leave our comments of what occurred and what we did in that call. Would you generally write a report for a verbal dispute only? No, unless it's at the request of one of the parties. When you were typing in your computer to add text to a call, is it common to refer to the focus individual in the call as a victim, whether a crime has been committed or not? Yes, because that's how the call was broadcasted and created. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, counsel for Ms. Hurd completes the questioning. Now, there was another woman that was present as well, correct, that night? I believe so, yes. Do you remember testifying earlier that at the end she was holding and embracing Ms. Hurd? Yeah, I believe she was sitting on the couch with her when we left. Did you interview that woman? No, she was with Ms. Hurd when my partner was speaking with her, I believe. I had never spoke to her. Okay, because did you ever attempt to interview that woman that was on the couch who was embracing Ms. Hurd? No, because I was speaking with the gentleman outside. Do you know whether Officer Sines ever attempted to interview that woman who was sitting on the couch? I am unaware. Okay. Now, let's go back to the description that you gave, and you responded again to it with Mr. Hsu, that she was crying and had a red face, and you said the redness was consistent with crying. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Why was she crying? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know why she was crying. Did you ask her? I personally did not because my partner interviewed her. Then when you downloaded with your partner later, did you ask Officer Sines why Amber Hurd was crying? No, my partner never advised me. She spoke with her while I was speaking with the gentleman. Do you recall that you testified that there was another woman who was embracing Ms. Hurd on the sofa at the end of your visit? Yes. Do you recall asking why she was embracing and holding Ms. Hurd? Why 
did you not ask either the other woman or Ms. Hurd why the woman was embracing and holding Ms. Hurd? Well, I did not is because we were trained in the academy to separate the parties and to try and attempt to build a rapport with the individual we're speaking with. Therefore, it was two females and my partner was female. So therefore, my partner spoke with the female. Would it be fair to say you deferred to Officer Sines to conduct any type of investigation with both Ms. Hurd and the other woman who was embracing her? I know my partner spoke with Ms. Hurd. I am unaware. I cannot testify if she spoke with the other female. When you said you learned at the academy to divide up the parties, was it your understanding that parties meant the victim and the suspect? All parties. Do you know whether anyone made an attempt to divide up the woman from Ms. Hurd, the woman that was embracing her? I am unaware. Okay. Now, the redness that you said was on Ms. Hurd's face when she was crying and emotional. Could it also have been consistent with injury? I do not think so. I perceived it as redness from crying. Did you consider whether the redness on the face might be from something in addition to crying? No, I did not. And you had never met Ms. Hurd before, correct? Never, never even seen her. And would it be fair to say that you don't know what Ms. Hurd's, what her characteristics are for swelling, bruising, redness, correct? Correct. I'm going to ask you, Officer Haddon, to look at what has been marked as Haddon Exhibit Number 8. And it's from the Office of the Chief of Police, and it's dated November 24, 2014. And the subject is Domestic Violence Supplemental Report, Form 15.40.02, Revised. Do you see that? I do. This was provided to us by the LAPD in response to our document requests. Did you have an understanding that there was a Domestic Violence Supplemental Report form that was in place as of May 21, 2016? Yes. I'm going to show you what is Exhibit Number 9. And this is called Domestic Violence Supplemental Report. And it is something, is it your understanding that the police officer fills this out? Yes, we fill it out. Okay. Do you recall whether you had filled out this supplemental report at any time prior to May 21, 2016? I don't recall. Now, if we look at the first column on the Domestic Violence Supplemental Report, it has a column that says victim. And then there are a number of descriptive words underneath with boxes. Do you see that? I do. All right. Now, the first one is shaking. What, if any, observations did you make of Ms. Heard shaking? I don't recall. All right. What, if any, observations did you make about Ms. Heard being unresponsive? The little time I dealt with her, yeah, she was unresponsive and crying. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part. She was unresponsive and crying, did you say? Yes. Okay. And I guess you've answered the third one here, that she was crying, correct? Yes. All right. And what, if any, observations did you make of whether Amber Heard was scared? I didn't. You didn't what? I did not observe. I'm sorry, are you finished with that answer? It sounded like it was a half. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I did not observe her being fearful. Okay. But Ms. Heard did not want to file a report, correct? Correct. She did not want to press charges, correct? Correct. And she did not want to tell you the name of her husband, correct? No, because I didn't talk to her. Well, do you recall testifying earlier that 
Ms. Hurd was uncooperative? Yes, she was uncooperative with my partner. All right. And do you recall testifying that Ms. Hurd was uncooperative because she was emotional, she was crying, she wasn't sure whether she wanted to file a report or not, and she was not, then she said she did not want to? Yes, that's what she had spoken to my partner about. Do you know why Ms. Hurd did not want to file a report and did not want to press charges? No, I did not. Officer Haddon, I'm going to show you where it's been marked as deposition exhibit number 10, and I'm going to have you look at it. It starts out with field notebook divider domestic violence laws, LAPD form 18.30.02, and it has the date. This is date of January 31, 2010 at the bottom with the footnote. I'm going to just direct your attention here to case preparation, and this is relating to domestic violence laws. Case preparation says, note the complainant's emotional and physical condition. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And then ensure all evidence is gathered and preserved, e.g. bloody clothing, damaged bones, damaged property. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Did you or Officer Sines provide any kind of notes relating to Ms. Hurd's emotional and physical condition on May 21, 2016? No. Did you or Officer Sines ensure all the evidence was gathered and preserved, including the damaged property? I said no, and all these things would have been documented if there was a report. All right. Let's go to the next bullet point. It says ensure photographs are taken of injuries or lack of injury to complainant and accused, both the day of and after. Did you take any photographs to show a lack of injury? No. Did you take any photos to show a lack of damage? No. All right. And then this next one is ensure photographs are taken of the scene and damaged property, et cetera. So I've already asked you that one, so let's go to the next one. Canvas location and interview all witnesses, including children, neighbors, law enforcement. Did you do that in this instance? Yes. Who did you interview? I spoke with the gentleman. All right. Anyone else? No, that's it. Now, there were two females present in addition to Ms. Hurd, were there not? Yes, including her. I believe there was two. You don't recall the third woman there? No, I don't recall the third woman being there. All right. Did you ask if there was anybody else that was present who had witnessed any aspect of this? I don't recall exactly, but all right. Let's go to exhibit number 11. So what did you determine this call was after your investigation? A dispute, a verbal dispute. It's not against the law to argue. I argue in my life. So you decided that there was only a verbal dispute, therefore it didn't constitute domestic violence? From the information or lack of information I was able to receive from the witness and the information my partner gathered, yes. Is it your understanding that a police officer can be brought up on charges of misconduct if they engage in neglect of duty? Yes. All right. Is it also your understanding that a police officer can be brought up on misconduct charges at the LAPD if they violate department policies, rules, or procedures? Yes. And is it your understanding that a police officer can be brought up on charges of misconduct if they engage in conduct which may tend to reflect unfavorably upon the employee or the department? Yes. All right. Thank you. Your next witness is by deposition also. I assume you need a few minutes to switch that out. Are you ready to? We're ready. Well, actually, I think we still have exhibit 
Oh, I think that's that's right. Okay, while well, we go ahead and it's early, but let's go ahead and take a morning recess for 15 minutes so we can take care of that and get it set up with the next deposition, okay? So don't talk to anybody and don't do any outside research, all right? All right, which exhibit did you? Well, I, I think we're in agreement, Your Honor. It's just that we have to take action. Okay, who's the next? Which deposition is next? Officer William Gatlin, Your Honor. Officer Gatlin. It's with him. So okay. we did the redactions that we discussed. Uh, I don't know how to. I haven't seen it yet, so I just right, need to. Why don't I go ahead and take the 15 minutes, and when I come back, we can we can figure it well, out. Because so. I don't think we were in disagreement on anything else. Okay, and how long is this deposition? I believe it's around 35 minutes, Your Honor. Okay, so we'll be able to start the next one right after we should that. Be able to, yes. So why don't you go ahead and get the exhibits for the next one after that as well, and I'll come back at 11.20 and we can do both of them, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you, Your Honor.
Which evidence do we have? Yeah, okay.
All right. Are we ready for the jury then? Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, your next witness. Okay. Officer Gatlin. Can you just spell the last name for me and for the court reporter? G A T L I N. Okay, thank you. Name and business address for the record. William Gatlin. Uh, business address 251 East 6th Street in Los Angeles, California, uh, 90014. How long have you been an officer with the LAPD? About eight years. And what is your rank? Uh, police officer two. Now, your partner on May 21, 2016 was Officer Dean, is that correct? Yes. You were wearing your body cam on yep. May 21, 2016? Yes. When were you first assigned body cams? Um, sometime in 2015, I think. Uh, you know, I don't remember. Uh, so, Gatlin, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 6. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go down to the second page. And this is the incident recall for the two, for you and Officer Diener for May 21, 2016, in connection with the call at the Eastern Columbia Building at 49 South Broadway. Now, Officer Diener indicated that he believed that he was driving that night. Is that your recollection as well? Uh, yes. When Officer Diener is driving, what does that mean you're doing? Uh, it means I handle uh, the computer. Based on the incident recall, when did you arrive at the scene, you and Officer Dean? We arrived at the scene, it looks like at 2224. And that is 1024? Correct. So when you arrived, do you recall whether there were any other police officers <laughs> that were on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any press on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any type of public gathering at all? No. Okay. Was it relatively quiet? Uh, from my recollection, yes. Uh, did you see very many people in the lobby when you came through? Not that I remember. Okay. Um, and then tell me what you recall of this incident once you got there and you were shown to the elevator? Um, I remember we went up the elevator, um, exited the elevator, walked down the hallway until we found the unit number, uh, knocked on the door, a male answered the door. And uh, at that point, I mean, at that point, I, I, I really didn't know whether this guy is potentially the suspect, if this guy is involved in the altercation or who this guy was. So we kind of talked to him for a second and he advised us that the police had already been there. He had a business card from them. And we told him that we uh, still needed to step inside to check on the subject or potential victim just to make sure that she's okay and that this is uh, indeed related to the previous incident and not a new incident where the suspect had uh, potentially returned and caused uh, there's another new issue at hand 
So do you recall that you already knew that this had this place had there that another officer had had uh, answered the call or other officers had answered the call before you got there? Yes, I already knew there was a previous caller. And how did you know that? Um, just kind of keeping track when you're on the computer, you kind of are able to keep track of the calls throughout the night and where they're at and what's going on. And did you know that Officer Signs and, and Haddon had been the ones who had answered the call earlier? Mm, I, I believe so. Okay. Um, did you speak with Officer Signs or Officer Haddon before you went to the Eastern Columbia building? No. I'm going to take you down to the same exhibit. The page that's uh, bait stamp numbered LAPD 11. And I'm going to ask you, this is a TOMSG data log. Do you recognize this document? Uh, I've never seen this before. I've never seen one of these documents before. All right. Do you have a recollection of receiving an administrative message at 222230, which would be 102230, uh, saying, uh, incident 4756 is the same incident as yours. 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response. Uh, I did not recall. I do not recall getting that message. Right below it at 222322, which is 1023 and change, um, it shows that your unit responded with Rog, in other words, Roger to that message. Do you see that? Yes. Would that have been you that did that or would that have been Officer Dean? Uh, probably me. Okay. And, and is that because you weren't driving and Officer Dean was? Yes. Okay. So does this refresh your recollection of what had been communicated to you and why you knew that someone had already answered this call earlier? Uh, yes. Are you familiar with the term cycle of violence? Yes. Well, typically, do you make arrests on domestic abuse calls? Um, you know, sometimes we do, and sometimes the other party is no longer at scene, and we would just take a report. Okay. Are there times where they just refuse to cooperate and you just left? Um, yeah, but yeah, there are times like that. You were going to say, but what? I, I guess like the totality of the circumstance based on just because someone's uncooperative doesn't automatically mean that we'll just leave. You know, if we're, you know, observe some kind of injuries or if there's a third party witness that's cooperative that could lean in where even if the victim's uncooperative, that we would still take some sort of action. Now I'm going to ask you to turn to number page 13 here. And this is the CAD summary report. What if any uh, involvement did you have in this? Um, so uh, I would be the one that kind of closes out the incidents on the computer. So the uh, writings over to the right of the screen would be the how I would what I would type into the computer to close out the call. And so you would have typed in related to previous incident verbal argument only checked residence. Yes. Who told you that it was a verbal argument only? Uh, based on uh, the knowledge I had of the previous call, I'm able to see potentially how they closed out the call. And I could have seen it from there. So you could have gotten this from A1A. Uh, 1A1. 1A1, yeah, their report. Officer Science and Officer Haddon and then just repeated it here? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you have any recollection of anyone in the apartment up in Penthouse 3 saying that there had been a verbal argument only? Um, not to my recollection. Now let me just jump back to the events of uh, May 21 for a moment. Were you aware that that was the apartment of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? No. 
When did you first become aware of that? Uh, mm, I don't remember. Are we talking, talking months, days, hours? I think it was a couple days. And do you remember how you learned of it? Mm, no, I don't. And did you know who Johnny Depp was at that time? Uh, yeah. And were you a fan of Johnny Depp's as of May 21, 2016? Um, I guess I liked a couple of his movies. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like rushing out to go see him or anything. I don't know. Are you a fan of Johnny Depp's today? I can remember the last movie I saw of his. Did you know who Amber Heard was as of May 21, 2016? Uh, I was aware that there was an actress by the name of Amber Heard, but I not, was not totally familiar with her or any of her, any of her work. When you saw the name Amber Heard on the uh, incident recalls, did it register with you that she was an actress? No. Did you recognize Amber Heard when you came to the apartment? on May 21, 2016? No. How close did you come to Amber Heard while you were in your apartment? Um, I'd have to say probably between 10 and 15 feet. And what was the lighting like where Amber Heard was sitting? It's pretty uh, dim. Did you ask to see Amber Heard's face in the light? No. Did you ask Amber Heard whether she had any injuries? No. Did you interview any of the persons present about what had taken place earlier that night? No. Why not? Uh, because uh, I was aware that there's a previous call regarding the incident and the mail to answer the door uh, kind of made it clear to us that this is still left over from that same incident and a new incident had not occurred. So I didn't feel the need to at that time. Did you go through and search the entire apartment, including bedrooms, offices, and other areas? No. Again, why not? Uh, so same as I explained earlier, and they were all adamant that uh, her husband was no longer at scene. Did you go into any of the other adjoining apartments? No. You asked where the husband was. Why did you ask where the husband was? Uh, because in the comments of the call, it stated the uh, husband and wife were arguing. Okay. And, and it was also a domestic violence. Uh, yeah, it's a domestic violence call, and it wouldn't be uncommon for, you know, the male to answer the door to tell us that he's not the husband, and later it turns out that he is. So, you know, we kind of have to talk to the other party involved to make sure that that's not the male that's involved in the uh, argument. Did any of the four people that were in the apartment identify Johnny Depp as that male? No. Was there any effort by any of the people in that apartment to get you to press charges or investigate further? No. Would you say the people were reluctant to even have you come into the apartment? It felt that way. And what happened? What occurred that made it feel like that to you? That they didn't want to be in the, They didn't want you in the apartment. Um, just the uh, the way that the uh, male was acting to answer the door. And he kind of just said, "Oh, let me just go grab the business card from the previous call." And then even so, when we uh, had went inside, uh, it didn't seem like anybody was particularly eager to talk to us. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Exhibit 1, Defendant's Exhibit 1. <clears throat> and this is uh, the Daily Mail, Mail Online, July 3rd, 2020. And I'm going to go down to the 10th page. What, if any, evidence did you observe when you went to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, that Amber Heard and her friends were attempting to concoct an abuse hoax to set up Johnny Depp? 
to be accused of domestic violence? None that I can recall. Uh, what, if any, evidence did you see of Amber and her friends spilling wine and roughing the place up? None. And what, if any, evidence did you see that Amber and her friends were had concocted and gotten their story straight and were relaying them to you when you arrived? None. Did Amber or her friends at any time while you were at the apartment on May 21, 2016, claim that Johnny Depp had committed domestic violence of Amber? Not to me, they didn't. Did you see them do that to Officer Diener? No. What, if any, efforts did Amber Heard make to come over and to show you any evidence of injuries? None. And what, if any, effort did Amber Heard or her friends make to try to show you any type of property damage? None. And what, if any, evidence do you have that Amber or her friends made placed a second call to 911? I don't have any evidence that it was one of her friends. I just know that there was a second call placed. Well, actually, if I can recall, I think it said that uh, her friend was on the phone with her and her arguing with her husband. Who said that? I believe that's what the incident recall said. Did you ever provide a sworn deposition uh, saying that you saw no evidence of a crime at the penthouse before today? No. Did, are you aware of whether Officer Dean uh, provided a sworn deposition saying he saw no evidence of a crime? He has not. Uh, and now this uh, call came in at 2030, which is approximately 8.30 uh, regular time, PM, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then a little bit further down, just seven minutes later, comes a duplicate call that appears to come from the New York Police Department. So yes. roughly seven minutes of each other, correct? Yes. Did you see that when you were looking back and trying to look at the history? Uh, I believe I saw all of this. Did you see in any of the incident recalls or any of the documentation that you reviewed that there, the officers, Officer Science and Haddon, reported to the scene, left the scene, closed out, and then another call was made to come to 849 South Broadway? Um, yes. What did you see? The second call created was the one that we had received. And it says, at, at, this is 2209, which would be 1009, right, roughly? Yes. It says, teletype from NYPD ICAN. Female stated she was on the phone with her friend. She began screaming at her husband. Subject, Amber Heard, husband, Johnny Heard, male, 53 years old, 511, NFD, NFI. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. But that's New York Police Department, and back here, it says New York Police Department, correct? Correct. Okay. But after you communicated down here, <clears throat> on the administrative text messages, and I'm now on uh, LAPD 11, this is 2222. You now know it's the same incident as yours and 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response, correct? Yeah, this is just a message from another unit. So, I mean, uh, just because they're telling, they're basically just sending me a message that it's related. You know, it, it doesn't mean that it's exactly the same call. By the time you showed up at the door of Penthouse 3 at the Eastern Columbia building, you already knew that Officer Science had handled this call and you were just double checking to make sure that the perpetrator wasn't there and that everybody was okay, correct? I was aware that Officer Science had handled the call at that location earlier, but it doesn't mean that I have to that I treat it as if it's handled already 
we still have to get there and speak to them and make that determination what, that it's not a completely new incident. Okay. And you did that, right? Yes. And you put in the system for this call. Twenty one twenty twenty forty six to twenty one twenty two. Met with Vic, checked location, verified husband left location, victim advised verbal dispute and refused to give any further information. Actually that was Hadman's signs, right? That wasn't me. I didn't put that in. And then what you put in, that was why I couldn't find it. You put in twenty two seventeen, and I'm sure you weren't there till three oh one, but we talked about some dates about that. You put in related to previous incident, verbal argument only, check residence, correct? Yes. Okay. And your putting verbal argument only was based on what you had reviewed with science and hadn't, correct? Uh, yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as defendant's exhibit number two, uh, and it's a picture, it's a portion of a video clip from the ECB building. And it has 521 2016, and the time is 22 28 14. Uh, do you recognize the person in this picture? Yes. And who, who is in this picture? Uh, Officer Deer. I'm going to ask you to take a look at Defendant's Exhibit Number Three, and that's uh, reflecting a video clip again. And it's dated 521 2016 and says 22 28 15. Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Deaner. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Deaner. So I'm going to go through and show those to you. Come in and make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're all good? Nobody else was in here? No. Okay. The, the other officers came by and checked the apartment and the other apartment as well. Yeah, okay. It must have been like a double call. Okay. Who's Amber? Okay. And Johnny? Is definitely not here. Is not here? Okay. Left oh. probably like two hours ago. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Everything's all good then? No, it's good. Alright. Thank you. Well, if you guys need anything else, just call us back. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, officers. Definitely. Thank you. So this one is, the, is uh, defendant's exhibit number four. Coffee's hot. Burn it up. Word round 10 down three. Pantad. Pantad. Before we go further, can you two uh, show you now the, you're putting verb team and says 22, 28, 15. Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Diener. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Diener. So I'm going to go through and show those to you as well. Okay. Have. So this one is, the, is uh, defendant's exhibit number four. Coffee's hot. Burn it up. Word round 10 down three. further can you tell whether this one is your video cam footage or it is officer Diener's? uh this appears to be officer Diener's. and so that's you over here yes can you tell whether it's you or officer Diener that's saying officer signs mm, i cannot tell okay how did you know that it was officer signs who'd been there uh, because i was aware which unit had responded to the call there and i knew that she was working that unit I don't know if it's related to the same call from earlier or if somebody called again. Probably. So we just did the check. Do you guys know someone in New York or something? Yeah, she probably called twice. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, can you just talk to your wife and make sure it's not, it's not my wife? Or, oh, okay. We'll whoever. Different conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, whoever it is, you know, stuff out, we just got to check on and make sure it's up there all good. I, I'll go get the business card from the cops. She's. Yeah, I don't know. Just because we got another call and we came again, we still got to make sure. Give me one second. So, now, would you say, and this is, I'll represent this as Josh Drew, and he's already provided testimony. Would you say that Josh Drew was discouraging you from even coming into the apartment uh, or seeing Amber Heard? Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if she called twice or, or whoever called, but we just got another notification. So. We just need to come in and make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah, okay. They're all good. Nobody else is in here. No. Okay. The, the other officers came by. All right, Officer Gatlin, can you tell which one of these people is doing the talking of these three girls, women? Uh, I can't tell for certain, but it, a, it appears to me it's the girl in the middle. That's the uh, one that's leaning forward with the white shirt. Do you know which one of these is Amber Heard? Um, from this view, I can't tell. All right. Do you know what color hair the person that's the most forward that's in the middle has? Uh, I can't tell from this. 
Okay. Can you tell what color hair the woman, the furthest right is? It's in front. I can't tell. It looks like her head is in a shadow. Okay. Can you tell what color hair the person that's uh, middle but in the back? No, same. Everything looks like they're the tops of their heads are in shadows. All right. And you believe that the one to the left is Amber Heard? Um, no, I I believe that that's the one that's doing most of the talking. I can check the brain and the other part as well. Yeah. It must have been like a double call. Okay. Who's Amber? Okay. Johnny is. Did you see anybody acknowledge that they identify themselves as Amber? Uh, it looks like it was the girl sitting furthest away from me, or furthest away from the camera. Okay. And how would you describe the lighting in there? Uh, pretty dim and uh, dark. You said earlier you thought you were 10 to 15 feet away. How much would you estimate now that you are looking at this on body cam? How far away are you from the three women? I would still say it's in that range. Did you get a clear look? at any of these three women? Um, I can't remember. And did you ask to have any of them come out into the lighting so that you could take a better look at them to see if potentially they might have injuries? No. What perception did you have about the level of cooperation of these four individuals with your answer in this call? Uh, pretty uh, low level of cooperation. Okay. Now can we uh, bring up uh, exhibit number five? It's the other video. I just want to run through both of them because there's a little bit of a different angle in the two. Yeah. It must have been like a 
Now showing you de defendant's exhibit number five. And let me just stop you for a minute. Does this appear to be the video cam from your video cam? Uh, yes. Just stopping here again um, on these three women. Uh, you had indicated before the woman that's leaning forward here that she's in the middle. Is that correct? Uh, it appears that way. And you think she's the one who did most of the talking, correct? Uh, yeah, right now she was the one talking. Okay. And you believe that Amber is the one in the back behind her? Yes. Um, are you able to see the right side of Amber's face? From this camera view, it looks like she's kind of facing uh, straight towards me. So uh, I would have been able to see the right side of her face from there. Would you have been able to see it clearly? Uh, due to the low lighting, probably not very clearly. Okay. Johnny is definitely not here. He's not here? Okay. Well, probably like two hours. 
while we're still there, can you tell how much hair Amber has covering the right side of her face to you pictures? Uh, no, it looks like uh, from this camera view, most of the time, like half of her head is blocked from the uh, woman in front of her. Can you tell whether she's wearing any makeup? No. Everything about good then? All right. Well, if you guys need anything else, just call us back. Have a good night. Do you recall looking for any injuries in the faces of the three women? Um, no. Now, uh, Officer Gatlin, do you recall seeing two dogs in the house? Yes. They were running around pretty freely? Yes. And when you say that, would you be able to, sitting here today, say that the person in these three photos, defendants seven, eight, and nine, is the same person that was sitting on that sofa in the back? Are you able to draw that connection? Um, no, I don't recall. Do you... Do you disagree with my description of what's in this picture? No, I was stating that I didn't observe that when I was inside the apartment. Are you able to testify whether Amber Heard was the victim of domestic violence by Mr. Depp on May 21, 2016? Uh, based on our investigation, it appeared as if she was not. Your investigation of what? Based on her refusing to give uh, any statement on what had occurred. And uh, at the time, we did not observe any, <clears throat> any visible or verifiable injuries to her. Anything else? Not that I can recall. Right. So did you interview any of the three other individuals in the apartment? No. Did you ask any of the individuals to give you a statement about what transpired? I believe the female that was sitting in the middle of the three uh, told us that everything was fine and that the other officers had already uh, conducted an investigation on the incident prior to our arrival. Did you ask that individual to give you a statement? Outside of that, no. Did you take that individual aside and try to interview her without the others present? No. Why not? Uh, as I just stated, uh, everybody there had told us that the uh, officers who had responded a couple hours before us had conducted the investigation, and this is... Uh, our call is still stemming from that incident, and there's been there have been no change in the circumstance since then. Do you know whether Officer Science and Officer Haddon took any of the individuals aside and interviewed them? No. Did you at any point uh, ask Amber Heard to come forward and examine her in the light to see if she had any injuries? No. Did you? take a flashlight just to see if she had any visible injuries to her face or her body? No. Did you ask Amber Heard if she had any injuries? No. I'm asking whether you're in a position as a police officer to testify under oath that Johnny Depp did not commit any abuse of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016. I don't believe I'm in the position to testify whether he did or did not because I was not there when the incident potentially occurred. Okay. A and you didn't conduct your own independent investigation, correct? Outside of the female telling us that everything was fine and uh, the male that answered the door, that uh, told us that the other officers had already came and talked to everybody and uh, 
she told us they checked the both the two apartments. So I felt at that time sufficient that, as I stated, there's uh, no change in the circumstance from the previous call. So we did not go further into investigation. And that's the extent of your investigation, correct? Correct. Did you do that that night on May 21, 2016? Did you do anything other than what we have looked at on the video camera in connection with investigating whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence with Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No. Do you know whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No. Sorry, your next witness, uh, Alejandro Romero. Alejandro Romero. And if I might, Your Honor, um, this is another one that begins with questioning by counsel for Ms. Hurd and later on switches uh, to questioning by counsel for Mr. Depp. Okay, thank you. Romero, will you please state your name and address for the record? My name, <clears throat> sorry, my name is Alejandro Romero. I go by Alex. What is your current occupation? I work out of the front desk of the Eastern Columbia building. And is that for the Action Property Management Company? That's correct. How long have you been employed at the Eastern Columbia building? Approximately 13 years. And could you please describe what kind of work you do for? the Eastern Columbia building? Most of it is just access control and I uh, deal with a lot of uh, residents uh, regarding their packages and uh, food deliveries. Okay. And have you done that pretty much the whole 10 years? That's correct. I'm going to take you back to 2015 and 2016 for a moment. How many okay. people, how many people would you say would go through the building on any particular day in that time. We're talking uh, about tenants and visitors. I cannot say a number because uh, there's there's 147 units in the building, and there's uh, there are visitors, uh, guests, friends. Uh, uh, actually, we used to send delivery people out. We don't send it anymore because of the COVID. Uh, but I cannot tell you a number. There's thousands of people probably. Have you ever met Johnny Depp? I saw him a couple of times. Okay. Do you remember what Mr. Depp was wearing on any of those occasions? Nope. Do you remember what jewelry he had on? Nope. Do you remember what headgear he was wearing. He was wearing a scarf or a hat. No. Do you remember whether Mr. Depp was wearing any makeup or eyeliner? No, nope, I don't remember. Nope. You couldn't tell me one way or the other, right? No. Um, do you know whether Mr. Depp has had ever been physically violent with Amber Heard? And by this, I mean hitting, punching, throwing objects at her, kicking her, headbutting her. You know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp ever did that to Ms. Hurt? Nope. Do you ever seen Mr. Depp uh, slam things around or be angry? No, I have never seen him like that. I'm going to ask you some questions now about Amber Heard. When did you first meet Amber Heard? Um, I believe uh, uh, she was dancing on the lobby. I met her at the front desk. I got interact more with uh, her sister, Whitney, I believe her, that's her name. And uh, her good friend, uh, Raquel, Rocky. And, uh, but Amber, I only see her like once in a while when she was, uh, sometimes used to get packages. Do you recall whether Ms. Heard became a resident sometime around March 2016? Don't remember. Could you tell me one way or the other? 
I just can't remember. Like I said, it's been so long. I just don't remember. And like, I know you guys sent me the papers to review, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't didn't want to review them because it's been so long. It's like uh, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. Yes, I went through the witness statement, and it's everything that is written there. That's what I said. Okay. That was correct. It was that was accurate. Okay. That's why I signed it. So during the time between 2015 and 2016, how many times would you say total that you interacted with Amber Heard? For a whole year, I, I don't I can give you a number. Because it could be like probably I'll see, I probably saw Amber for uh, three times in one day, probably I'll see like five times, or probably I will never see him for a whole week. So I don't have like, there's not never been a routine. Okay. How would you describe Amber Heard's interactions with you? Were they friendly? Would she smile at you? Would she talk with you? She was really friendly. She always smiled. And, but she, we never had like a, like a uh, interaction as a, as, as really close relationship. Like, uh, like I do with some of the other residents. She okay. never told me any of her problems. She never stopped by and talk about her personal life. She never did that. They're asking you about uh, a date that you recall seeing Amber Heard on May 25th, 2016. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And you said, probably, I just can't remember the days. I've got a really bad memory for dates. Did you see that? Yep. So, Mr. Romero, would you at any time be able to remember what type of clothing Amber Heard was wearing from one of her events? Nope, I don't remember. Um, would you remember on any daily basis uh, what type of hairstyle she was wearing? Nope. Would you remember on any type of basis uh, what type of uh, uh, bag she was Amber Heard was carrying? No. Would you be able to say uh, whether she Amber Heard was dressed up or casual on any given day? No. Would you be able to uh, say whether she was what type of makeup Amber Heard was wearing on any given day? No. Would you be able to say, for example, whether Amber Heard had on concealer or foundation on any given day? No. Would you be able to say whether Amber Heard had on blush or powder on any given day? No. Would you be able to say whether Amber Heard had a mascara or eyeliner on any given day? No. How about eyebrow pencil or lip pencil? No. Do you have any mem memories of Amber Heard uh, wearing a particular type of makeup with a type of outfit? No. If you were asked uh, to describe uh, any characteristics of Amber Heard from two days earlier without knowing you were going to be asked, would you be able to testify yeah. to any of those, what she was wearing, what her makeup was, what her hairstyle was? No, I won't, probably won't remember. When is the first time that you recall anyone saying anything to you about the police being called at the EC building because of a domestic dispute between Mr. Depp and Amber Heard? Well, uh, to answer your question, whatever happened, it happened on a Saturday. I don't work Saturday. When I got there on Monday, they asked me, oh, you heard what happened? And I said, no, what happened? So that's how I find out. Okay. Then I, I went to the, I went to the cameras and see what what was what was going on. And as soon as I saw Johnny Depp on the camera on the elevator, just walking back and forward on the camera in the elevator, I said, "Okay, I know that was him, and that's all I knew." But I was never I was never I was not there on that Saturday when that happened. I think I believe that 
that whatever they happened, they say it happened. And when they called the police, I believe it was a, it was on a Saturday, and I was not there. Okay. Do you recall who told you that on that Monday following the Saturday? Okay, Don, as a matter of fact, I think it was one of the residents that they approached to me and they said uh, there was a lot of noise because the person was working out on the gym that's next to the penthouse. They heard a bunch of noise and that's it. And I, that's why I checked the camera and said, and when I looked at the cameras and I saw Johnny, like I said, was just walking back and forward in the elevator. And I said like, okay, all right, okay, no, I, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. And I didn't say anything more. I turned up the camera and that's it. So the first part of that, who, somebody was working out and heard noise? Someone was working out on the gym and heard the noise, they heard some, uh, a lot of noise in the hallway. Cause it's really rare to hear anything because most of the time uh, the penthouse level is, is really quiet. Okay, do you remember who the person was in the gym? that heard a lot of noise in the penthouse that night? That's correct. I do remember the person. Who is it? Uh, I remember the person. It has been a resident in the building for a long time. I just don't remember. I don't remember her name. And where is the gym in comparison to the penthouse that's owned by Mr. Depp? Like I said, Johnny Depp owns all the penthouse on the on below the clock. The gym is six. the gym of the Eastern Columbia building is just in front of one of the penthouses. You actually can see it through the window. You can see the gym through a window of the penthouse, or you can see the penthouse through a window of the gym. You can see the the gym through one of the windows to the penthouse, and they have the patio. That leads to the gym. Then I'll start to add it to lead to the gym. Okay. And this tenant, if you if you think of her name while you're, you know, even if we're asking other questions, please let me know. This this tenant, this is a resident there, right? That, that saw this. Yeah, I believe her name is uh, Shana. And, and so she told you she heard a lot of noise. That's correct. Did she describe anything, uh, voices, uh, any objects, anything like that? No, she just said it was a noise, uh, just noise. And uh, she was just surprised because, like I said, it's always really quiet. Okay. And so she wanted to know what happened. And so you went to the video cameras to look at video. How did you know when to look for them? Because she got the time, she got the time that she was working out. That's why I, I, I figured out the track, the, the time on the camera and looked. And then when I saw, as soon as I saw, like I said, Johnny Depp walking back and forth in the other, I turned off the camera and I figured out, okay, this is what happened. I figured out if we wanted to together, so I said, okay. When you said you figured out what happened after you saw Johnny Depp in the elevator, what did you figure out had happened? I figured out that was that was that, that's why they called the cops, the police. Because why? Because of the because of the noise that was on the penthouse level. Mr. Romero, I'm going to ask you to look at this is a video clip uh, marked as Romero Exhibit Number Eight.
that shows a date and time stamp near the bottom. Do you recognize this as the elevator at ECB building? That's correct. Mr. Romero, you're nodding. Is this the video that you remember looking at after Shauna told you that she heard the noise that night? That's correct. And that's Mr. Depp? Correct. Do you recognize the other two men in the elevator? I recognize uh, the guy in front of the elevator button. That's his uh, personal bodyguard. The other guy, uh, I've seen him before, but uh, I never interact with him. If I did, I don't remember. You said he looked he agitated? Tried. Yeah, he looked agitated. Like, he was walking back and forward. He took his jacket. His body language is it was uh, different of, uh, than before. Most of the time, he's really calm. He's just like really happy person. Yeah, like this is the first time I saw him like that. And then you go to the next. So then you say Wednesday, May twenty fifth, at approximately ten thirty, Ms. Heard walked into the lobby accompanied by Ms. Raquel Pennington. That's the person you called Rocky earlier. Do you remember her? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And you said that Ms. Heard approached you to ask you for the key to her unit, which you gave her. And you said we did not discuss anything else at that time. Correct. And Ms. Heard stood approximately three feet away from you. I did not notice any bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind on Ms. Heard's face. Do you see that? Correct. Okay. But you weren't looking for bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries on Ms. Hurd's face that night, were you? I was not looking for any marks or bruises or anything. Uh, but it's something like that it will be really noticeable. But I guess, you know, I was not looking. I was more focusing on what my job duties was, like getting the key. And also, this I gave him the key, and they were talking about. I told her, you know what, your dog. I was talking with Raquel because her dog got out of her unit, and that was one of, one of my concerns. I would tell her, you know what, I saw your dog was outside. He didn't want me to get get too close to it, so it's still out there. You know, on the penthouse area, that dog will be fine because it's not like I said. It's always really quiet. And Mr. Depp owned everything up there, so it'll be fine. So that was one of my concerns. That was my job, and I was just taking care of that. I was not trying to say, oh, let me see your face. No. So, and that's where I'm going to follow up. Do you remember what Ms. Heard was wearing that night? No. Do you remember whether she was dressed up? No. Do you remember where she was coming from that she was coming home at 1030 at night with Ms. Penny? No, I don't remember. They didn't mention to me. She was actually, she was on the phone. She was with Raquel in front of me. We were talking about it and then she left to the lobby where she was still on the phone. So I, was focusing, I was focusing more on Raquel because she, they want, I was telling about her dog. Okay. Do you remember what hairstyle Ms. Heard had that night? No. Do you know what type of makeup Amber Heard was wearing that night? No. Can you tell me whether she was wearing concealer or foundation? No. Could you tell me whether she was wearing blush? No. Could you tell me whether she was wearing any type of, any kind of eye makeup? No. So who wrote the sentence, I did not notice any bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind in this bird's face. I'm pretty sure if I would have said something like that, I would have said something. Mr. Romero, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't saw any marks or bruises on her face. I don't just don't recall. Just don't saw anything. She was just standing in front of me. I'm asking specifically, I did not notice any bruises cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind to Ms. Heard's face. Who wrote that's that? What, that's what I said. I didn't saw any marks or bruises on her face. 
that's what I said. But so they asked, they asked me, they asked me if I remember seeing anything. I said, I just don't recall seeing any marks of bruises because she was just sitting in front of me. I just don't remember any, seeing anything. I just don't remember. If it, how it would have been so obvious, like someone had like a black eye, I would have like, whoa, you know, I would have seen that. And I would have remembered because it's something that you will, you will see. You know, like so noticeable, like you will, oh, like you will remember. But I, when I was there talking to her, she was like three feet away from me. She was right in front of me. I just don't remember seeing any marks, bruises, or anything. But you don't know whether she was wearing makeup to cover it, do you? No, I don't know. I, I, she was wearing any makeup to cover it, probably. You know, the, the probably would you would probably will cover any bruise, but you cannot cover the swelling. Were you looking for swelling? No, I can say I was not looking for anything. In fact, you were spending more time talking to Rocky about her dog, were you not? That's, that's correct, but I got I got a habit of uh, when I'm talking to someone, I look into their eyes. And when I was talking to uh, Amber and Rocky, I always look into their eyes. Okay. And I will probably wouldn't notice like any swollen or bruise, like I said, I would probably would notice. It's fair to say, Mr. Romero, that you can't say that Amber Heard had injuries or did not have injuries that day on the 25th? I don't remember. Okay. And like I said, I would probably remember the swollen, but I didn't saw anything. I don't re just don't remember. And you don't remember seeing anything, right? But do you remember even looking? I remember. Okay. I remember. I re okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I remember. I got to tell the whole story, how they got there. Before they got it, they went and get the keys. They come down. They say, somebody tried to get into my unit. They scratch us on my door and say, and like, um, um, I'm really sorry, but who will think it's gonna get into your unit because they saw some scratches on the door, like, what, four inches above the door? Because the dog was scratching the door, was trying to get in, and they thought about someone trying to break into the, the, the unit. I said, oh, in my head, I was like, you really, you think someone's trying to get into your unit? There's scratches like four inches above your the floor and your door. That was the dog trying to get into the unit. They were so afraid. Oh, somebody's trying to get into my unit. They're like, oh, come on, really? And I actually went, they asked me to go inside the unit just to check room by room to make sure that no one was there. So I did that as part of my job, make sure they're safe, but I like really, I didn't understand why they want me to do that. Like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just so stressed out because of this. I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this court case. I, everybody got problems and I don't want to deal with this no more. Okay. I don't know how to. I don't want to put this in any more words. The interaction you just testified about is Amber Heard and Rocky Pennington and talking about the dog and going up and checking out the penthouse. None of that was on video footage, correct? That's correct. We don't have cameras in the video. I'm mean, sorry, we don't have cameras at the hallway. We okay. don't have cameras on the hallway. I'm going to show you uh, what has been marked as Romero De exhibit number one. It's a deposition that you was taken of you on July 19, 2016. Now that's approximately two months after the May 21, 2016 incident. Um, and I, do you recall giving that deposition? 16 probably I did, I just don't remember. Okay. I'm going to take you to page 35. I've 
a little different. When you were asked, this is the same incident that you're talking about now, okay? And it's talking about, okay, you spoke with Amber at the front desk, later saw her in the lobby, later went upstairs with her. It says, the question at line six, I just want to go back for a second here. You said several times in answer to my questions that you didn't recall seeing any marks on Amber's face. When you say you didn't recall seeing any of those marks, any marks, did you mean that you didn't see any marks on her face? And your answer then was, I say that because when I saw Amber, I was not looking to see anything on her face. I was not looking to see anything. Do you recall giving that testimony on the under oath back at that time, two months after the incident? Yes, I, do, I remember. Because like I said, I was, I always make eye contact with someone I'm talking to, but I'm not looking to find something like like, oh, your makeup is wrong, uh, you, you haven't uh, have changed your eyebrows, or your uh, eyelashes are not even, or I'm not looking for anything. I'm just looking at their eyes, and I'm, looking, I'm not looking for anything else. But if I see something, I will re probably will remember. If you saw something, right? Yeah, I, I would have probably would see, like, if she had a swollen, like if she was wearing makeup, probably would have been seen the swollen. I probably would remember that. But I was not looking for anything. I was like, oh, you know. How, how swollen was Amber on the 25th of May? How swollen was her cheek? Well, then? according to the pictures you, you, I've been seeing right now that you're showing me, it was pretty swollen. I would probably would remember that. How many days later did you see her from that swelling? That was on a Wednesday. That was from Saturday to Wednesday. Right. How many right. days would it be fair to say that you cannot testify one way or the other whether Amber Heard was domestically abused by Johnny Depp on May 21, 2016? I, can, I cannot say that. I would, not, I would not agree to testify against anyone of domestic violence because I was not there. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I was not there. I was never there. I was probably hundreds of miles away and got no idea what happened that day. And do you remember that there was pictures of wine, a glass of wine and bottle of wine, wine stains on the floor outside of the, uh, in the hallway of the penthouse from May 21st, 2016? I remember telling the mark. I'm not going to say it was wine. All right. Well, it, you know, I, I'm not an expert. Ladies and gentlemen, the next portion of this deposition contains questions asked by counsel for Mr. Depp. You sit here today. When you saw her at the front desk on March 25th, you didn't see any bruising, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see um, uh, that correct? That's correct. I didn't see any marks or bruises. You didn't see any swelling either, did you, Mr. Romero? That's no. correct. No swelling and she at was all. Only, and she was only three or four feet away from you, correct? Correct. And you were looking right into her face squarely, correct? Correct. And the lighting was good at the front desk, correct? Jackson, correct. It was so good that had she had any bruises, swelling, or marks on her face, you would have noticed that, correct? That's correct. And then later that later that same day, and you testified to this already today, later that same day, you went up the elevator with Ms. Hurd and Ms. Pennington uh, in connection with their request for you to check the penthouse, correct? That's correct. And during that entire uh, period of time, taking them up to the penthouse, walking through the penthouse, and then finally you leaving and going back to your desk, uh, you did not, you looked, you looked at Ms. Hurd during that time period, correct? That's correct. And you looked her in the face, squarely in the face, correct? Correct. And you didn't notice any swelling, correct? Correct. 
I'm sorry? Correct. Okay. I didn't saw anything. Did, did you see did you see any swelling? Injection. No. Did you see any bruises? No. Nope. Did you see any marks on the face of any kind? No marks at all. And again, just to repeat, when you were previously, when you were confronted, I can report the face. Did you see any uh, swelling on her face? No. Nope. See any bruises on her? No. Nope. Did, did you see any marks of any kind on her face? No marks at all. And how was the light down when you were at the reception and you were looking at her and didn't see any of this? How was the lighting? The lighting is actually pretty pretty good. It's not it's and how not far dark apart? at all. She was three feet away? apart. Approximately three feet, three to, three to four feet apart. Were you looking her square in the face? Correct. Okay. And when you were up in the penthouse and you uh, were looking her square in the face, how far apart were you from her then? We yeah. actually were, were pretty close to each other. Uh, she was probably next, just next to me. She, she was telling me like, go into this uh, this um, this room. So I need to pass right in front of her. And do you recall seeing any bruises, swelling, redness, or any marks on Miss Hurd's face on May twenty fourth, twenty sixteen? I'll see anything. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, the remainder of this deposition of this witness uh, contains questions by counsel for Ms. Hurd. I'm going to talk a little bit about the video clips that Mr. Depp's attorney showed you. Um, I'm going to ask you, first of all, Mr. Presidio showed you a number of video clips from May 24th. Do you recall that? May 24th? Yes. Yep, no, it's Tuesday. But in fact, you don't recall seeing Amber Heard on May 24th, correct? It's, I don't remember. I don't even remember what I got for breakfast. Okay. Well, let's pull up exhibit number one. Let's stay on page 17. That's a good place. Um, mm -hmm. And this is your deposition from July 19, 2016. Do you recall that? 19, yeah. Okay, and that's... That was three in the morning. Okay. And it said here, uh, did you work... So Saturday was the 21st. Did you work that day? No. Did you work Sunday, May 22nd? No. Did you work May 23rd? Yes. On May 23rd, while you were working, did you see Amber at any time? I don't recall seeing her. Question, did you work on Tuesday, May 24th? Yes, I did. And and on Tuesday, May 24th, at any time, did you see Amber? I don't recall seeing her. Do you remember that being your testimony two months after the events? No. Okay. I just don't recall. I just don't remember. Okay. Um, and then I, while we're here, now, Mr. Uh, Presidio had you go through a number of video clips and ask you a bunch of questions about whether you saw swelling, whether you saw red marks, whether you saw all kinds of other things. Um, but in fact, um, I'm going to ask you and tell me if you need me to bring up the videos and replay them. Can you tell me what type of makeup Amber Heard was wearing in any of those videos? No, I can't, I can't tell you. Can you I didn't even me? know she was wearing any lipstick. Can you tell I don't know. me? Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing concealer in any of those videos? Uh, no. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any foundation in any of those videos? No, I can can't tell you. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any blush in any of those videos? No. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any powder on, in any of those videos? No, no, but she looks really pale. Well, do you know what shade of concealer or foundation or powder Ms. Heard uses or used at that no. time? No. Okay. 
So you don't know whether Ms. Hurd was wearing makeup in every one of those video clips, correct? Correct. Right. I'm going to try to move along. So the incident was May 21st, 2016. You saw her the night of May 25th, correct? Correct. You said right. you saw Amber Hurd hundreds of sure. times while she was there. Amber Heard treat you well and was she friendly to you in each of these hundreds of times? Yes, yes. I, I'm not going to say no because she was really always nice. All right, this but, is my last question. Be nice. All right, this is my last question. You testified in response to Mr. Presidio's questions um, that you testified truthfully in all of these occasions. Did you testify truthfully, truthfully to everything that you testified in response to my questions today? That's correct. Uh, All right. I, I did. Oh, okay. 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 All right. It's a good time to break for lunch. Uh, we'll just break a little early, so just don't talk to anybody. Don't do any outside research, and we'll see you at 2 o'clock, okay? Thank you. That was a first. I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will say, Your Honor, that is the most bizarre episode. Okay. All right. I just, see, I've just never seen that before. Started, I've seen a lot of things, but I've just never seen that. driving that. Yeah, that did it. All right. So um, we will come back at 2. Uh, is there anything preliminary before we get to the next deposition? We'll, we'll, we'll You'll work through them, and then if I come back at 2, we should be able to take care of it pretty quickly? Yes. yes okay. Sure. All right. Great. We'll come back at 2 then. Thank you.
doing first? We're doing Karina first? No, we're doing Ross first. Okay. Okay.
Are we ready for the jury? Okay. We are, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. All right, your next witness. Plaintiff calls Christian Carino, Your Honor. Christian Carino. And um, as with a, a, a number of the other depositions, this one will start with questioning by Ms. Hurd's counsel and um, at, one, at some point switch over to questioning by counsel for Mr. Depp. All right, and what's, how do you spell the last name just for me? Just C-A-R-I-N-O. Thank you. An address for the record, and you may use your business address if you feel more comfortable. Sure. Christian Carino, and the work address is 2000 Avenue of Stars in Century City. And, and that is in California? Correct. And what is your current occupation? I'm a talent agent. And could you give me just a very brief description of your educational background and work experience? Sure. I have a BA from the University of Massachusetts, and my work background is I've been at CAA for approximately 16 years, and before that, I had a 12-year uh, uh, run with two different advertising agencies in New York. And who were those advertising agencies in New York? Ogilvy and Mather and McCann Erickson. Right. Um, now, you indicated that you were a talent agent. Can you please describe what that means? Um, I represent multiple clients and brands um, in transactions in the entertainment space. And when you say in the entertainment space, what are you including? Just the different genres of entertainment, everything from um, motion picture to television to books to licensing to um, modeling, all the different areas that the agency is operates in. As a talent agent representing multiple clients, what types of services do you perform for them and what is the objective? Thank okay. You. Yep. I, I conduct transa business transactions on behalf of clients and brands in the entertainment space. And what does that mean? It means, it, it means I organize, pitch, transact in contractual agreements between talent and studios, talent and brands, entertainment platforms and individuals, brands and individuals. Do you represent any actors? I do work with every different group of talent within the agency. And for each person, it's different, the business that I personally oversee for them. So in some cases, I am um, negotiating contractual agreements 
for a music artist to go to Las Vegas. In some cases, I'm transacting an agreement for an artist to have a relationship with a brand. In some cases, it's a an artist with a platform like Netflix. It, it, it spans the, the general platform capabilities that the agency has overall. Is one of the objectives of your representation uh, to build uh, the careers of the individuals you represent? Yes. Did you have any conversations with Mr. Waldman in which you expressed any thoughts or opinions on how you believed any litigation was having an effect on Mr. Depp's reputation or career? Yes. How many times? One that I can recall. And when was that? I have no idea, years ago. If you expressed to Mr. Waldman that the sooner the litigation was over, the better for Mr. Depp, what were you thinking when you said that? Why did you think that? I think anytime somebody is in litigation publicly, it is at a minimum a distraction to that person's career and in a lot of cases, it's uh, it negatively impacts that person because there's attention drawn to them that uh, it is outside of what people want to know about that person. And what do you mean by it distracts from the career? I mean that the, with somebody who is well-known, people don't want to hear they're in a lawsuit with anybody about anything. Why not? Because that's just not what they want to know or hear news about people. And why do you believe that? Based on my experience in this world for the past 16 years. And when you say it negatively impacts, what do you mean by that? People don't wanna hear that the people that they look up to are in litigation. Do you also believe that that impacts career decisions by producers, directors, uh, companies, with brands, things of that yes. nature? Yes. And, and in what way? Because the general public doesn't want to hear that people that they look up to are in litigation. And when it, the, the more oxygen it takes up in the overall news or coverage of an individual and the less focused it is on that person's career, the less interested studios, brands, the general public becomes in that person. And therefore less opportunities? Yes. When you expressed to Adam Waldman that your opinion that the sooner the litigation is over for Mr. Depp, the better, what did Mr. Waldman say? I, to be honest, I don't recall exactly what he said but something to something like we're 
going to get this over with as fast as we can. Mr. Carino, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Carino exhibit number. We'll keep it labeled four. Um, do you believe that the Mandel lawsuit posed a distraction to Mr. Depp's career? I, I don't know. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Carino deposition exhibit number five. And as you can see here, it's an article June 21st, 2017, uh, the Hollywood gossip. Do you recall that coming up during that time frame, that issue? No. Have you read or heard of the Rolling Stones? Yes. Have you read or heard of GQ? Yes. Mr. Carino, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Carino deposition exhibit number two, and it's Rolling Stone uh, publication on June 21, 2018. Do you see that? Yes. Do you ever read this article? Parts of it. Are you aware of whether this article in the Rolling Stone, June 2018, that's reflected in Carino exhibit number two, impacted in a negative way Mr. Depp's reputation or career. Elena, I, I don't think it's possible to ask anybody that, that question without having done research among the people who read a specific article. If you're asking my opinion about whether an article like this or this particular article, in my opinion, would have a positive or negative effect on somebody's, you know, career, I could potentially answer that. But as to definitively whether an article has or has not had an impact on somebody's career, nobody can answer that question without research. Specifically. So you, Mr. Carino, I think we were just going to start looking at the uh, Carino exhibit number three. This is an article that was published in November of 2018. Uh, do you recall reading this at some point? What publication is that? Uh, this is GQ. Um, I probably read part of it, but I don't remember. You had any direct contact with Ed White or his company? Yes. And what is the nature of your contact with Ed White and his company? Payment on, on um, deals where Johnny was owed money. Bill collecting. When you say bill collecting, was it collecting on on your behalf or was it trying to collect from studios or companies? Uh, the latter. And so what would your involvement be in those circumstances? Um, Ed on occasion reached out to me to ask about the timing of a payment that was owed to Johnny. And were you able to answer those questions? Um, I think in all cases, I just referred him to somebody who worked for me to find out what the payment schedule was. Uh, other than these uh, occasions where Ed White would reach out to you uh, to ask when payment, timing of payment, did you have any other connection or communication with Ed White or his company in connection with Johnny Depp? No. Were you familiar with Jake Bloom? Yes. Do you know whether Mr. Bloom ever represented Mr. Depp? Yes. And what was your understanding of the nature of that representation? He was his lawyer. Did you ever talk to Jake Bloom? Yes. 
on how many occasions did you speak with Jake Bloom relating to Mr. Depp? I have no idea. Was it pretty frequently? What does that mean? Well, is it more than 10? Are you asking me if I had approximately 10 conversations with Jake over the duration of our relationship? Yes. I actually asked if you had more than 10. I wasn't asking you if it was exactly 10. Okay. I mean, I'm guessing that it was probably less than 10 in total. Was Mr. Bloom still representing Mr. Depp when you started representing Mr. Depp? I believe so, but I'm not sure. And when did you start representing Mr. Depp? Um, I believe it was in 20, late 2016. Mr. Um, Carino, are you looking at something to be able to refresh your recollection? I am. What do you have in front of you? A note to, that I made to myself of, of uh, the date of when Johnny was a client. And I think I wrote down October 2016. Do you have a recollection of the context of your discussions with Mr. Bloom? Yes. My recollection of the conversations I had with Jake were in regard to uh, getting uh, Johnny and Jake to meet and work out whatever the issues were um, around their disagreement. So you were trying to broker, if you will, a uh, discussion between them to try to resolve their issues? Correct. Were you successful in that? I don't remember whether they ever got together and and met about it, to be honest. Now I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition, Carino deposition exhibit number seven. And this is a um, lawsuit that was filed on October 17, 2017. Were you aware of this litigation being filed by Mr. Depp on his behalf against Bloom, Hergott, Demer, et cetera? Yes. And were you involved in any way in this litigation? No. Do you know one way or the other whether the filing of and the ongoing litigation associated with this lawsuit had any negative impact on Mr. Depp's reputation and career? I said no, Elaine. Do you recall whether there was any publicity surrounding this litigation that's reflected in the complaint that's Carino number seven? Are you asking me if I'm aware if the Jake Bloom litigation was made public? Yes. Yes. And, and in addition to being made public, do you recall whether there was publicity surrounding the Jake Bloom litigation? Yes. And do you recall whether there was publicity surrounding the Mandel litigation? Yes. Mr. Carino, I'm going to ask you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 10. Uh, and in this particular one, we have, this is the article that was written in the Sun Times that 
was the uh, beginning, if you will, of the uh, UK lawsuit. Do you have a recollection of seeing that? No. Did you ever read it? I don't know. I'd have to. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure I read at least part of it. If it's the the original document that caused the Sun legal issues. Now the date on this one is April twenty seven, two thousand eighteen. You see that on there? Yep. Mr. Creator, I'm going to ask you what has been marked as deposition, Carino deposition exhibit number 11. And it's dated June 13, 2018. It's hard to see that little stamp there, at that, but it was filed on June 13, 2018. Um, and it's Mr. Depp filing the news group, Newspapers Limited, who owns The Sun, and then Dan Wooten. Uh, were you aware? that Mr. Depp brought this lawsuit in the UK against the Sun and Mr. Wooten? Yeah. Mr. Crino, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked now as Carino exhibit number 12. This is a, this was published in the Washington Post on December 18, 2018. Were you aware of this article yes uh, op -ed. yes mr carino when i asked you whether you were aware one way or the other whether this lawsuit that's reflected in exhibit number 11 had a negative impact on mr depp's reputation and career you answered no what did you mean by that I meant that there isn't a way for any individual to know whether the filing of a document had an impact on somebody's career, positive or negative, without specific research conducted in exactly that case. The same as in the fa facts that you, because you haven't researched it, you don't know whether it impacted Mr. Depp's reputation or career, correct? I, I believe I stated that unless someone had done research specifically about the filing of this document and its impact one way or the other, it's impossible to answer the question. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Carino number 14. This is the lawsuit that Mr. Depp filed against Ms. Heard. Do you believe that the filing of this lawsuit reflected in Carino deposition exhibit number 14 and the attendant publicity has had a negative impact on the reputation and career of Mr. Depp? No. And why not? Because I've stated previously, it's not about the filing of a lawsuit. It's about the coverage. I mean, you're asking me what my opinion is of what Johnny's reputation is today. Is, is that what you're asking? Yeah. My opinion of what Johnny's reputation today is one of the finest actors of his generation. Has, in your opinion, has Mr. Depp's reputation changed at any point from October 2016 to the present? If you're asking me if what I defined as his reputation has changed in terms of his being viewed as one of the best actors of his generation, I, I would say no. 
So just so I'm clear that I understand your answer, in your opinion, Mr. Depp's reputation is that he is one of the finest actors of his generation, and that has been his reputation since you started representing him in October 2016. It still is today, and it hasn't changed during that time frame. Is that correct? The view on his acting ability has not changed. Well, I'm taking your definition of reputation. You said what they are known for. So I'm taking that specific definition, and I'm asking, is there anything other than that Mr. Depp is one of the finest actors of his generation that he is known for that has changed between October 2016 and the present? The only way I can answer that is as it relates to his professional capabilities, that has not changed. Is there something that has changed that doesn't relate to his professional capabilities? I don't know how to answer that, Elaine. Using your definition of reputation, which is what a person is known for, is there any aspect of what Mr. Depp is known for that has changed between October 2016 and the present? It's, I've stated what I think his reputation is, and I've stated that, in my opinion, his professional reputation as it relates to the quality of his acting abilities has remained unchanged. Do you make any distinction between personal and professional reputation? Yes. And what is that distinction? The difference between what somebody does on screen and off screen. What is your opinion of what Mr. Depp was known for off screen when you started representing him in October 2016? I think what he was known for off screen was a shroud of mystery of who he was because he was not visible to the public. And that was back in October 2016? I don't have a specific date for that. But when you started representing him, that was your sense? Yes. Okay. Did that change over time? Yes. And in what way did it change? It changed with the exposure of that that came with the losses. And the losses that we're talking about are the ones that we've already taken a look at. Exhibit four, seven, eight, nine, 11, and 15. No, I mean, 14. I mean, I'm not talking about any one or two specifically in general. Do you believe that Mr. Depp is still a shroud of mystery, not visible to the public? No. And when did that change? 
I don't know exactly when. Would you say it was cumulative over the period of time as a result of all of the litigation and the publicity ensuing? Probably. Maybe that. Is there any one specific litigation that you believe most significantly impacted on Mr. Depp's personal reputation no longer being a shroud of mystery and not visible to the public? My opinion is that Amber's accusations would have had the most dramatic impact on his off-screen reputation. I'm not talking about any one specific accusation. When you say Amber's accusations, what do you mean by that? I mean the things that she's accused Johnny of doing, both in that have been made public. Now, those accusations were made public in the divorce back in 2016, correct? I don't know exactly how or when they were made public. Given that you believe Amber's accusations would have had the most dramatic impact on Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation, would Amber have been filing the divorce action and obtaining a domestic violence restraining order have had a dramatic impact on Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation? I think the only way I can answer that is by saying I don't think filing for divorce would have any impact whatsoever. And I'm actually not familiar with the lawsuit to get the restraining order, so I don't know exactly what's in there. But if that was based on claims of or accusations of abuse, then that, in my opinion, would have a negative impact on Johnny's off-screen reputation. Mr. Carino, we were talking about Amber's accusations and your view that those would have the most dramatic impact on Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation. And you were talking about her accusations of domestic abuse and violence, correct? Yes. Were you aware that the Dan Wooten article published in The Sun included specific accusations by Amber Heard of domestic violence and abuse by Mr. Depp? The Sun case, is that what you're asking about? Yes. Well, first the article itself that was in the paper, the why is J.K. Rowling genuinely happy about employing Mr. Depp, the wife beater? Yes. And you're aware that the litigation, the lawsuit, including the particulars of the claim brought by Mr. Depp, included the accusations by Amber Heard of domestic violence and abuse by Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Given that the Mandel lawsuit included accusations by Amber Heard of domestic violence by Mr. Depp against her, are you able to say how much of Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation was impacted by the Mandel lawsuit? No. Now, you were aware that the op-ed by Dan Wooten in The Sun included accusations by Amber of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Are you aware, one way or the other, how much Mr. Depp's 
off-screen reputation was impacted by the complaint that was filed in this case that contained Amber Heard's accusations of domestic violence and abuse by Mr. Depp? No. Are you aware of how much Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation was impacted as a result of the op-ed in the Washington Post from Amber Heard? No. Are you aware of how much Mr. Depp's off-screen reputation was impacted by the accusations included in the Waldman tweet on May 2020 of the op-ed? No. Are you aware of any role or opportunity that Mr. Depp lost as a result of the op-ed by Dan Wooten and Son? No. Are you aware of any role or, when I'm saying opportunity, any kind of business opportunity that Mr. Depp lost as a result of the particulars of the claim that Mr. Depp filed? No. Are you aware of any role or business opportunities that Mr. Depp lost as a result of the op-ed by Amber Heard in the Washington Post? No. Are you aware of any roles or business opportunities that Mr. Depp lost as a result of the Waldman tweet from May 2020 relating to Amber's op-ed? No. Is there any other role or business opportunity that Mr. Depp has lost since you started representing him in October 2016? I would say his, I would say yes. What? The Pirates, the next Pirates movie. Do you remember which one that was? Six, seven, I'm not sure what the number is. It's six. I think Pirate Six is the one that's yet to come out. And why, what is your understanding of why Mr. Depp lost Pirate Six? My opinion is that it was related to the accusations that Amber has made. And what is your opinion based on? Excuse me? What is your opinion based on? Conversations with colleagues and studio execs. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Conversations with studios and other executives, both internal and external. When you say related to the accusations that were made by Amber Heard against Mr. Depp, are you talking about accusations of domestic violence and abuse by Mr. Depp? Yes. How many conversations have you had with studio and other executives? I have no idea. More than five, more than ten? I don't know about more than ten, probably between five and ten. Who do you recall speaking with at studios or other executives? Jerry Bruckheimer. Probably mostly Jerry and then colleagues at CAA. When did you first have any conversations with Jerry Bruckheimer about Pirate Six and Mr. Depp? I have no idea. Do you recall whether it was in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019? I don't. 
when did you have any conversations with colleagues at CAA? It would have been whenever the decisions were being made about how to cast that movie. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know what year that was. Do you recall who you spoke with at CAA? Mm -hmm. I spoke with Jack Wiggum. I spoke with Brian Lord. What do you recall Jerry Bruckheimer telling you? Um, I, I don't recall the specific conversations, but the nature of it was that the studio was having difficulty employing him. And did Mr. Bruckheimer tell you why the studio was having difficulty employing Mr. Duck? Um, no, not specifically, but it was understood. Did you ask? I didn't need to. Why did you think you didn't need to? Because everyone was aware of what was garnering the attention of the studios and determining whether or not he could be employed. When you say everyone was aware, how do you know that? I, I don't know, I just knew. Can you tell me who everyone is? Can you tell me who anyone is? The, the people who would have been involved in making that decision. Well, okay. if I'm understanding you correctly, and please correct me, I'm wrong. The only person at Disney that you spoke with about pirates uh, and employing Mr. Depp was Jerry Bruckner, correct? Um, yes. All right. And you spoke between five and ten times with Mr. Bruckheimer, and he did not say in any of those conversations the reason we're not employing. Mr. Depp is because of Andrew Heard's accusations of domestic violence and abuse by Mr. Depp, correct? That's correct. Mr. Carino, when we went off for the break, we were talking about your discussion with Jerry Bruckheimer and other executives at CAA um, respecting uh, Mr. Depp not being employed further at Disney and likely not pirates. Um, and I think a question came up right before the break and so I just want to make sure that I have clear, did you talk with anyone other than Jerry Bruckheimer at Disney about Mr. Depp not being employed again at Disney or Pirates? No. Okay. And was I correct that you, in a certain understanding, you had somewhere between five and 10 conversations with Mr. Bruckheimer relating to this topic? Um, probably less than that. I, I talk to Jerry regularly, um, but probably not that many on this topic. Okay. And was there anyone else at Disney that you spoke with at any point about Johnny Depp being considered for pirates or not being employable by Disney? No. Okay. And that is that true to the present? Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other discussions that you had, those were all with executives at CAA? Is yes. That, and that was Brian Lord and Jack Wiggum, correct? Yes. Anyone else? Not that I can recall, no. Okay. Do you, you had indicated that you believe that everybody, everyone was aware um, that the uh, impact of Amber's allegations were at the heart of this. Uh, if I'm, I just want to make sure that we're clear since we were just talking about this before the break. Jerry Bruckheimer did not say specifically what it was that caused Disney to decide not to continue with Johnny Depp and Pirates 6 or in other matters, correct? Correct. 
Well, and I'm trying to reach that it was understood. I'm trying to discover any facts that would have led you to believe it was understood. And if I'm understanding, use the same word, Mr. Bruckheimer didn't tell you that, correct? I, again, it was understood. So I don't recall whether either of us ever said anything specific about why, but it is something within the industry that is understood. Can you tell me whether uh, any other actors did not receive roles or were unemployable because of the Me Too movement allegations? Other than Mr. Depp, I'm asking. Not that I work with directly, no. In any of your discussions with Mr. Brookman, did you ask him what Mr. Depp could do to become employable by Disney again or to be able to get any part of any Pirates franchise going forward? No. Why not? Because there, in cases like this, there is nothing anybody can do. It is the directive of the studio to, and they have the sole right to make the judgment whether they can continue to employ somebody or not. And your understanding from your discussions with Mr. Bruckheimer is that Disney had made the judgment to decide that they could no longer employ Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yes, but, but not solely based on conversations with Mr. Bruckheimer. It was cumulative with the internal and external conversations. What did Mr. Lord say that led you to believe that? That Disney had made the, the decision, the judgment that they did not we're not able to employ Mr. Depp at Disney. Just, just that the decision had been made. What did Mr. Wiggum say about the Disney same. making the judgment of whether they would not be able to employ Mr. Depp? Or... Same thing. Okay. Just that they made the decision. Correct. Were you aware of any problems on the set with Mr. Depp during the filming of Pirates Park. Are you aware of Mr. Depp uh, engaging in alcohol and drug use, being tardy, any of those issues during the filming of Pirates Park? Um, I'm aware of him being tardy, but he's been tardy on everything in his entire life. Were you aware of whether that was troublesome to Disney during the filming of Pirates 5. I think it's troublesome to everybody, but uh, everyone has learned how to produce a film dealing to deal with it. Working around Mr. Depp? Yes. Do you know whether there was anyone on the set of Pirates 5 who wasn't willing to deal with it and was quite irritated by it? No. Were you aware that the filming had to be shut down for a period of time after Mr. Depp injured his finger? Yes. Were you aware of any disagreements between Mr. Depp and Disney, including Mr. Bailey and others who were on the project, about artistic differences? In other words, where Mr. Depp thought something should be this way or something should be that way and they didn't agree with you. Yes. Okay. What is your understanding of that? There was a difference of opinion on how the film was edited. And what is your understanding of what Mr. Depp thought it should be edited to? I, I don't know how to describe the difference between the Disney edit and Johnny's preferred edit. I think Johnny uh, told me about it, talked about it a little bit. 
Do you know how well Pirates 5 did at the box office? Not exactly. Do you know whether it was, it was more successful or less successful than earlier Pirates franchise movies? I think it was slightly less than, it wasn't the most successful installment of that franchise. Do you know whether Mr. Depp has a pay or play clause that would pay him even if he was not in the subsequent Pirates 6? In 6? Yes. I don't think he does. Have you or any, anyone at CAA on behalf of Mr. Depp made any efforts with Disney to find any roles for Mr. Depp since he filmed Pirates 5? My efforts were probably primarily around Houdini, which at one point was a film, but um, other people at CAA for sure did, yes. Who and who were they? Um, I, I would start with Jack Wiggum. Um, we'll now play volume two of Mr. Carino's deposition at which, okay, maybe time for afternoon. Sure. Why don't we just close enough to it? Absolutely, so. Your Honor. All right, before we get to volume two, let's go ahead and take a 15-minute uh, break. Please do not talk to anybody about the case and don't do any outside research. Thank you.
Okay, let's get the chair. All right, you want to continue with this witness then? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. We'll now play volume two of Mr. Carino's deposition, which is the questioning from counsel uh, for Mr. Depp. Okay, thank you. You're aware that this litigation involves a dispute between uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, correct? Correct. And you know both of those individuals, correct? Correct. Who did you meet first? Amber. When did you meet her? I, I don't know exactly when, but probably within the first few years of being at CAA. Okay. So can we, as an estimate, say uh, 2005, 2006 timeframe? Sure, I don't actually know, but okay. sure. But it was pretty early on in, at your career at CAA? Correct. And describe for me the events of your meeting her. Um, she was represented theatrically at the time by an agent named Warren Zavala, who has since left CAA. And he brought her down to my office because he wanted me to represent her with him specifically in the commercial space. And what do you mean represent her in the commercial space? Um, help identify business opportunities for her with brands. Okay. So not as an actor? Correct. And did you take on that representation? I did. And at some point in time, you did consider her a friend as, in addition to um, you two working together. Is that right? Yes. And in that regard, did you uh, you and her do anything social? Yes. And can you describe for me generally what types of activities you two would do together as friends? We would uh, go to dinner, go to events together hang out at each other's residences. And at some point, at some point in time, did uh, you consider Mr. Depp a friend? Yes. And how did that relationship evolve? And I'm just talking about you and Mr. Depp becoming friends. I spent a fair amount of time with both of them together and at some point started to spend time with him on my own as well. I see. And at some point in time, did Mr. Depp become a good a friend to you as Ms. Heard? I'm yeah. sorry, let, let me, let me re-ask that also. Did you consider um, at some point in time, did you consider Mr. Depp a friend to the same degree you considered Ms. Hurd a friend? Yes. And at some point, in, at, let me ask you, at some point in time, did you uh, represent Mr. Depp professionally? Yes. And can you explain to me how it 
how it came to you representing Mr. Depp professionally? Johnny asked me to represent him. And when you began representing Mr. Depp, did you continue representing Ms. Hurd? Yes. And do you recall who Mr. Depp's agent was um, prior to you? He was represented at another town agency, UTA. Do you still work for Mr. Depp? I do not. Do you recall when you stopped working for Mr. Depp? Within the past two years. And um, can you describe the circumstances of you no longer working for Mr. Depp? He left CAA to follow uh, an agent who left CAA to become part of a founding group in a new management company. And who is that person? Jack Wiggum. Was Mr. Wiggum ever affiliated with CAA? Yes. Okay. And say that when Jack Wiggum departed CAA, Johnny went with him? Yes. Okay. And when Mr. Depp left, um, left CAA, did you remain, did you remain friends with him? No. Okay. Well, I should probably first ask at some point in time, um, did your friendship with Mr. Depp end? Yes. And when was that? I would say at the time he left CAA. And did him leaving CAA have something to do with uh, the end of the friendship? I don't know. Are you still friends with Ms. Hurd? No. And when did that friendship end? Probably when the legal disputes started. And what legal dispute are you referring to? This one? The, I'm not sure which one was first, but one of the disputes between Johnny and Amber. Okay. But it was, your, your friendship with you're not referring to their divorce, correct? Correct. Okay. So you remain friends with both of them through their divorce. Is that accurate? Yes. Although you're no longer friends with Mr. Depp, do you have any animosity towards him? I do not. And same question with respect to Ms. Hurd. Although you're not friends with her any longer, do you have any animosity towards her? I do not. Do you recall when it is the last time you spoke with Ms. Hurd? I do not. Would it have been around the same time that um, your friendship ended with her? I would assume so. Is it at 16? No, uh, Mr. Carino, you'll see at the bottom here, and I don't know if you can see it. If you see at the bottom, it has a bait stamp number under the yellow tag. CC00070? Yes. Do you recognize this document? And take your time if you need to review it. Yes. Okay. And 
do you understand this to be a true and authentic copy of email exchange in which you were involved? I believe so. Okay. And you'll see it's dated January 11th, 2018, and the subject is WME. Do you know what, what is your understanding of what WME is? William Morris Endeavor. And what is that? It's another talent agency. Okay. And you've read this email from Ms. Hurd to you, correct? Correct. So at this point in time, was she a close friend of yours? Yes. And ultimately, did she leave CAA? Yes. And it was at this time? Yes. During the entire time you represented Ms. Hurd, did Mr. Depp ever interfere with your representation of Ms. Hurd? No. Did he ever ask you to do anything with respect to her career? Not that I can recall. Exhibit 17. Now, Mr. Crano, this particular document was not produced by you. You'll see that at the bottom here. The bait stamp indicates ALH. That means it was produced by Ms. Hurd. And this appears to be a text exchange between you and her. It's about a page and a half. If you could take the time to read it, and then I will ask you questions about it. I read it. You'll see at the top, Mr. Crano, that it's dated July 14, 2016. Based on that date and based on reading this text exchange, at this point in time, were you close friends with both Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes. And having read the text exchange, do you believe this to be a true and correct representation of the exchange? Yes. And to be authentic in that regard? Yes. Now, you start the text exchange by indicating J.D. just surfaced. What is the J.D. reference? Johnny Depp. And she says, I saw Laurel yesterday. Who is Laurel? Laurel is a therapist. Do you know her full name? Laurel Anderson. Did you independently know Laurel? Yes. Did you have anything to do with Laurel seeing either Ms. Hurd or Mr. Depp? Yes. And can you explain that to me, please? I introduced them all. And what was the purpose of you introducing her to them? They needed help. And can you explain to me in more detail what you mean by that? I think it was at a time where they needed somebody to help mediate the difficulties they were having. And what do you mean by difficulties? The strains on their relationship. And in that regard, did you have conversations with Ms. Hurd about the state of her relationship with Mr. Depp? Yes. I'm trying to determine for how long a period of time did Ms. Hurd have conversations with you about the state of her relationship with Mr. Depp? Can you give me a time frame? I would say she talked to me about the state of their relationship from the beginning until the end. The entire time you knew her? I'm sorry, the entire time you considered her a friend? Yes. And how about Mr. Depp? Did you have conversations with him about the state of his relationship with Ms. Hurd? Yes. And were those ongoing during the entire time you were friends with him? Yes. Did you say they both confided in you in that regard? 
Yes. So back to this uh, text exchange. Uh, where my cursor is, um, he, uh, Ms. Hurd says to you, yeah, she said that Johnny and I need to talk directly. Do you know who she's, do you know who Ms. Hurd's referring to there? Laura. That was your understanding after reading this? Yes. And then you ask her, do you want to do something tomorrow? She says, yeah. Um, she says, IDP, I do. Uh, you say, ha, okay. And then you say, what is safe to do? Do you want to come to my place for dinner? What did you mean by what is safe to do? It meant avoiding paparazzi. Okay. And then she says, it's so fucked up. I just want to tell him that what they are telling him isn't true. What was your understanding of what she meant by that sentence? I, I don't recall. Mr. Greeno, uh, while she's doing that, um, at, the, at the outset of this deposition, I asked you uh, if you recall being deposed about a year ago in this case, um, and you said yes. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to show you now is the transcript, a portion of the transcript from that deposition. And who is Mr. Bruckheimer? Jerry Bruckheimer is the producer of the Pirates franchise. And who is Mr. Wiggum? Jack was, Wiggum was an agent at CA who worked with Johnny. Okay. And who is Mr. Uh, Lord? Brian is one of the managing partners of CAA and also worked on Johnny Depp. And what was your understanding of why um, the Pirate 6 um, job was not offered to Mr. Depp? Leo, you're asking my opinion? Yes. Because of the accusations that Amber had made. And what I'm about to show you, Mr. Carino, is a article in the Washington Post authored by Ms. Hurd. You're going to notice that the article will be presented sideways. Um, so you'll have to tilt your head a bit uh, to, to review it. 719. Do you... Uh, First, Mr. Crane, why don't you take control and just scroll through uh, the document. It's just a couple of pages. Is this the top of the next page? Yeah, when there's a jump like that, it's just at the top of the next page.
Okay. Mr. Carino, have you seen this document before? Yes. Do you know who wrote this document? Yes. Who wrote this document? Amber. Amber Heard? Yes. And do you see there on this first page of the document, it actually indicates that it's written by Amber Heard on December 18th, 2018? Yes. And you understand that this document was authored by Ms. Heard and published on December 18th, 2018? Yes. And do you recall reading it at the time it was published? No. Mr. Crano, I'm showing you an email exchange in which you were involved. Um, it's just this one page. I'll blow it up so you can review it. Uh, take a second to review it, please. Okay. And let's start at the bottom of this. Well, do you see at the top that the email ray line is entitled Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow won't return the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Yes. And this email exchange was on December 20th, 2018, correct? Correct. And do you recall that the article you just read published by Ms. Heard was published on December 18th, 2018, two days before this? Yes. Okay. Now, if you go to the bottom of this email, do you see there is this link to an article? Yes. And it says uh, URL defense, uh, I'm sorry, it says uh, movieweb.com? Yes. Mr. Carino, what I put up next to the, the email exchange that we've been discussing is an article uh, dated December 20th, 2018. Okay. So this article is dated December 20th, 2018. Uh, the email sent to you by um, Robin Baum is that same day, December 20th, 2018, correct? Yes. Who is Ms. Baum? Johnny's publicist. Okay. And she's sending this article to you, is that right? Yes. And then in response, you say, um, we were, were we told this officially from Disney? And she responds, uh, no, I'm sorry, Jack Wiggum responds, no. Is that accurate? Yes. Sure. So you testified uh, just a, a few minutes ago that it was your opinion that Mr. Depp lost the Pirate 6 movie because of Miss Heard's allegations. Is that accurate? Yes. Allegations of abuse, correct? Yes. And is this a demonstration of when Disney made that decision to not uh, hire Mr. Depp for Pirate 6? Yes. So 22. Did you ever see Mr. Depp physically abuse Ms. Heard? No. Did Ms. Heard ever tell you that she had been physically abused by Mr. Depp? No. Did you, did Mr. Depp ever tell you that he had physically abused Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever witness um, any injuries on Ms. Heard that would indicate that she was physically abused? No. Now, again, this is a few months after the filing of the divorce papers and the TRO, and Ms. Heard states to you, I'll call you right back, sorry. And you say, okay. She says, is it too late to call? And you say, just finishing dinner, we'll call you as soon as we walk out within 20. And she says, please tell him I love him. Um, is that an accurate reading of the text exchange so far? Yes. Do you know if at this time, uh, based on your relationship with Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp, um, whether Ms. Heard wanted to reconcile with Mr. Depp? Yes. Did you understand that she did? Yes. Did Ms. Heard 
based on your personal friendship with Ms. Hurd, close personal friendship with Ms. Hurd, would you say that she confided in you? Yes. And what about Mr. Depp? Yes. Mr. Crino, at some point in time after Ms. Hurd filed those divorce papers in May of 2016, did she make any requests of you to intervene in the relationship between her and Mr. Depp? What do you mean by intervene? Assist in, let's start with assist in communications between the two. Objection, same objections. Can you explain to me what transpired in that regard? Walk me through. At some point around that time, she wanted me to arrange for them to get together in person. And what did you do after that was requested of you by Ms. Hurd? I talked to Johnny about it. What happened after that? He was reluctant at first and then agreed. And then what happened after that? I mean, this is a long time ago, but I remember there was a fair amount of discussion about the TRO and how we would deal with that because nobody wanted Johnny accused of violating the TRO as an outcome of that meeting. And I don't remember exactly what we did, but Amber at some point warranted that she would never accuse him of violating the TRO to do the meeting. And I set the meeting up. So just so I understand, you set the meeting up at the request of Ms. Hurd? Objection. And as part of you setting up, she told you that it didn't matter? I'm trying to understand, what was the issue with respect to the TRO? My understanding of the restraining order, at least at the time, was that he couldn't go within a certain distance of her. Okay. And what was her suggestion with respect to that issue in connection with her wanting to meet with him? She promised me and told me to relay to him that she would never accuse him of violating the restraining order as a result of agreeing to meet her. And I believe, but I don't recall exactly, there were conversations with both sides legally, I believe at the time, to make it transparent to everybody that this was happening. Okay. And then what happened next? I arranged the meeting. Johnny was in San Francisco on tour, and I arranged to borrow a friend's house. And Amber and I flew to San Francisco and drove to the house. And Johnny showed up a few hours later. And did the two of them meet? Yes. In the same room? They sat outside. Okay. How close to each other were they? Inches away from each other. And how long were they out there talking? For how long were they out there talking? Several hours. Did you, although you were out there, did you, were you in a position where you could see them through a window or otherwise? Yes. At some point in time, the conversation ended, correct? Correct. And what happened after that? I received a call or a text from Steve, whose house it was, and he 
notified me that he would be coming back to the house within the next hour or so. And I told Johnny and Amber, and we decided to rent a hotel room in San Francisco so that they could continue to talk. And did that in fact happen? Objection. And at some point in time, you left that house, correct, to go to San Francisco? Yes. And was it the three of you? No. Johnny had security with him and we talked about the fact that they, it, it wouldn't be a good idea for them to be seen together there. So Johnny left with his security in his car and I believe Amber and I took an Uber. And what happened after that? We all met at the hotel room. And do you know what happened after that? Um, they started arguing. And do you recall any details of the argument? No. Uh, and for how long were you, was this argument had in a, in a hotel room? Yes. Did you witness the entire discussion or did you leave at some point? I left the next morning at five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning. And Mr. Carino, um, I'm showing you emails that were produced by you. First, uh, the bottom of the first page, it starts at the bottom of the first page. The string above it was redacted. And you'll see that it starts on August 7th, 2017. Do you see that? August 7th, 2017, yes. Having read it, uh, can you determine who uh, you're speaking with in this text exchange? Amber. Oh, hang on, let me ask you this. Do you know whether or not um, Ms. Heard ever had a relationship with Mr. Elon Musk? Yes. She did? Yes. So again, it's dated August uh, of 2017. Um, and she says, dealing with breakup, I hate when things go public. See, I'm so sad. Um, having reviewed the document again, do you have an understanding of what she's referencing there? Um, I believe she's referring to breaking up with Elon. You say it seems like a press release. You weren't in love with him, and you told me a thousand times you were just filling space. What are you saying there? I'm saying, why would you be sad if you weren't in love with him to begin with? And by him, you're referring to who? Elon. Okay. And at this point in time, um, were you still close friends with Ms. Heard? Uh, looks looks like that's the case at that time, yes. And was, did she still, uh, at this point in time, did she confide in you about her relationships? Yes. And you respond, I'm sorry, she responds, I know, but I wanted time to grieve and recover in my own time. Is she still referring to Mr. Musk there, do you know? Your understanding. I don't know whether she's referring to Johnny or to Elon in that line. Okay. In this point in time, do you know uh, what her feelings were? What was your understand? At this point in time, what was your understanding based on uh, your experience with her, what was your understanding um, uh, of her relationship with Mr. Depp? I, I don't believe there was a relationship at that point. And you say, and you got that, no? She says, I hate that yet again a man lets me fall on the spikes by myself. You ask how so? She says, oops, meaning they are mad at me for leaving them and put things like this out there. You say, like, sorry. She 
she says like that, you say, you could avoid all this if you stop dating uber famous people. You can be with a big man who isn't famous. What were you relating to her there? I believe what I was saying was, if you don't like being in the press about your personal life, then don't date people that are famous. Sure. You indicated that she moved on immediately after JD, after, I'm sorry, after Johnny Depp to date Elon Musk. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, sure. Do you have an understanding in one way or another whether Ms. Heard and Mr. Musk were in fact dating at the time of the San Francisco reconciliation that she asked you to set up? I don't know whether they were dating, but they had definitely spent time together. Do you know how long after the San Francisco attempted reconciliation you gained the understanding that Elon Musk and Ms. Heard were in fact dating? I don't know exactly how long, but not long after. Do you know who she's, or what was your understanding of who she was referring to when she was said, here, I love him? Johnny. Based on this exchange, did you have an understanding at this time whether Ms. Heard wanted to reconcile with Mr. Depp? I believe she did. And at this point in time, she was still a close personal friend of yours, correct? Yes. And at this point in time, was she, did she consider you a confidant in your understanding? I think yes. Okay, just to authenticate this document again, Mr. Crane, I do see that it's referenced at the bottom, bait stamp CC, indicating that you produced this document. Yes. And having read this, do you perceive this as a trunk or a copy of a text exchange between you and Ms. Heard? Yes. Okay. And I will, can you see at the very top here, it's dated August 16th, 2017? Yes. And Ms. Heard states to you, I written so many notes. Can you give him one? I don't know how or where to start. There's no way to begin. And all I have to say, but I have so many. Finally, I am single, clear in my heart and mind. I just want him to know I loved him and that I am sorry. Do you have an understanding of who Ms. Heard is referring to here? Yes. And who is Ms. Heard referring to in this text? John May. And what is she asking you to do here? She was asking me to deliver a letter that she was writing to him. And does she also want you to, and it says, and that I am sorry. What was your understanding of what she was asking you to do there, if anything? I believe that was all in reference to getting him a handwritten letter that she was writing or trying to write. Was it your understanding at the time of this text exchange, August 24, 2017, that Ms. Amber was attempting to reconcile with Mr. Depp? I believe so. Okay. And I know this may sound repetitive, but on August 20, at the time of this text, on August 24, 2017, you and her were still close personal friends, correct? I believe so. There's not much here at all, Mr. Cranwell, but I did want to confirm that this was a document produced by you, correct, based on the bait stamp on the bottom? Yes. And do you see it's dated September 27, 2017? September 23rd. Oh, you're right. My apologies. It's dated September 23, 2017, and it's a text to you that says, God, I miss him. Do you have an understanding of who Ms. Hurd is referring to there? Yes. And who's that? Johnny. And 
do you see at the bottom, the date of the text is June 9th, 2018? Yes. Okay. And it says, I text him happy birthday. Do you know who sent that and who the him is? I assume this is from Amber and she's talking about Johnny. You've had a chance to review the whole document. What does this appear to be? It appears to be the communications around the time that we set up the meeting in San Francisco. And who are these communications between? Me and Johnny. Okay. And this first bubble, can you tell if the blue is you or Mr. Depp? I think the blue is me. Sure. Earlier in your deposition, at the very outset, I was asking you about your representation of individuals at CAA. You indicated that you represent individuals that are both actors and musicians. Would you consider Mr. Depp in that pool? Yes. And you represented, or CAA represented him both in connection with his acting endeavors and his involvement with the vampires? Yes. And was Mr. Depp's participation in Hollywood vampires lucrative? No. Do you know whether or not it was something Mr. Depp enjoyed? Yes. Plaintiff calls Laura Wasser by deposition, Your Honor. W-A-S-S-E-R. Thank you. Will you please state your name and address for the record? Laura Allison Wasser, Wasser, Cooperman and Mandels, Suite 800, 2049 Century Park East, Los Angeles, California, 90049. Thank you. What is your occupation? I'm an attorney at law. And how long have you been an attorney? 26 years. You represented Mr. Depp in the divorce against Amber Heard, is that correct? Yes. And you are here under subpoena? Yes. Your practice has primarily been focused on domestic relations in California, is that correct? Yes. Are you a member of any bar other than California? No. During the period 2012 to 2016, was California a no-fault state with respect to divorce? The answer is that California was a no-fault state during that period. During the period 2012 to 2016, was California a community property state with respect to the provision of assets in the divorce? Yes. And what does that mean to you? California is a community property state, and what that means to me is that assets which were earned or created during the course of the marriage, absent some other theory of law applied, be divided equally. And what do you mean by absent some theory or law applied? I'm sorry, Elaine, what was the question? Oh, a theory of law. When I say a theory of law, I mean if there's a premarital agreement, if there's some other, it's not completely a blanket community property. There may be things that were earned from a separate property source that would not be considered community property. So I was just trying to provide, for the record, some exceptions to what would be considered community property and therefore divided equally. Now, if someone alleges domestic violence or abuse against their spouse, would that change the amount they would otherwise be entitled to under community property laws? No. In obtaining 
a temporary restraining order. What is your understanding of the process? The moving party files generally with uh, 24 hours notice to the person who is being accused of domestic violence, a declaration and forms with the court and requests a temporary domestic violence restraining order that will generally last no longer than a 21 day period when the defendant is able to make his or her arguments as to why such a restraining order would be inappropriate. And the temporary restraining order, can it be continued? Yes. When did you first begin representing Mr. Depp relating to his divorce with Amber Heard? Uh, I believe it was in December of 2015. I'm going to ask you to pull up document one, Wasser document one, and let's go ahead and label that as Wasser exhibit number one. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser deposition exhibit number one. It is a letter dated May 24, 2016. It's addressed to Jacob Bloom uh, and it says re in remarriage of death. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and it's from Samantha Spector, who indicates she's representing Amber Heard. As of the time of this letter, had you made known to Amber Heard or Ms. Spector or anyone else related to them that you represented Mr. Depp? I don't believe so. Did you receive a copy of this letter from someone? I believe so. I think I've seen it before, so yes. Did you receive this letter on or around May 24, 2016? Okay, next page, please. Hang on. Yes, it was around that time. Around May 24, 2016? Yes. Did you have any communications with Samantha Spector in connection with this letter? Yes. And when you say within days, could it have been the same day, May 24th, the next day, 25th? Possibly. I'm going to direct your attention to the next paragraph. It says, to this end, please have Johnny promptly signed and returned by Friday, May 27, 2016, the enclosed notice of acknowledgement receipt form, confirming service of the summons petition law case cover sheet and blank response. Did you do that? This letter was not directed to me, Elaine. No, I, I understand it, but it was given to you, correct? I believe so. And you were representing Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And Mr. Bloom did not represent Mr. Depp in connection with the, the divorce, correct? Correct. So once Mr. Bloom gave this to you, then did you represent Mr. Depp going forward in communication with Samantha Spector? Once we received this letter, our firm took over with representation of Mr. Depp in the dissolution action. Thank I cannot recall whether or not the request made was done by Friday, May 27th, but I believe that it was. Probably have that notice and acknowledgement of receipt somewhere with a date on it. 
Now, the next section, I think, is something that you referred to earlier. It said, in addition, we are requesting on Amber's behalf the following. And it talks, it says, appropriate pendente light support. Uh, did you have an understanding of what that amount might be at the time of, that you saw this letter? I did not have an understanding of what appropriate pendente lite support would be at that time. Did you ask Samantha Spector? I don't recall. I don't recall our specific communications regarding her requests. Do you recall making any kind of counter to any of these items? All I recall is that without any notice to us at 8.30 in the morning on the 27th, Samantha Spector and her client went into court and obtained a no notice ex parte restraining order. Had you had any communications with Samantha Spector prior to her going into court on that Friday, May 27th? Yes. How many communications had you had with Ms. Spector prior, following getting this letter and prior to her going into court at 830 on May 27, 2016? I do not recall. Do you have a recollection of whether any of the communications that you had with Ms. Spector between the receipt of this letter that's dated May 24, 2016 and going and Ms. Spector going into court on Friday, May 27, 2016 related in any way to requests on your behalf, on behalf of your clients? that you made? No. You recall having communications with Samantha Spector between May 24 and May 27. You can't recall how many and you can't recall the specifics of those communications. Is that accurate? It's not accurate. And in what way? Please tell me. I recall that we had communications between the 24th and probably the 26th. I doubt we spoke on the morning of the 27th before she went into court. I do not know the content of those communications and I do not know how many communications were had. Now on the next paragraph, it has a proposal for private retired judicial officers. Ultimately, did you and Ms. Spector talk about using private retired judicial officers, whether it was the list she provided or any others? I believe so, yes. And what do you recall? My recollection is that is in almost all of our cases, certainly those with high profile clients, we would have liked to take it out of the system. Ms. Spector was not willing to do that with this case. What do you recall Ms. Spector saying to indicate that she did not want to take it out of the public space? I don't recall her saying anything. Okay. Now, after your understanding was that a Kletz DVTRO was in fact obtained on Friday, May 27, 2016 by Ms. Heard against Mr. Depp, correct? That is my understanding. After that, did there come a time that you or anyone on, on, at your law firm communicated with the Eastern Columbia building concierge staff or management? Was those the downtown lofts? The, the, the penthouse lofts, yes. It's, and if it's easier for you, everyone's been referring to the Eastern Columbia building as ECB. Would that be helpful at all? Sure. Or we can, if you prefer to call them the penthouse loft building, that's fine too. Now that we've identified them, I understand what you're talking about. We can call them whatever you'd like. Uh, did someone from my firm speak with somebody uh, at the 
at those buildings? Yes. And who from your firm spoke with someone at the buildings and when? I believe either I did or my partner, Samantha Klein, or an associate who is also working on the case, Lisa Sutton, from our firm. We also had co-counsel on the case. They may have been involved. As to when, I have to imagine it was sometime in June or July of 2016. Now, you, you indicated either you or Samantha Klein or Lisa Sutton, and you also had co-counsel. Do you have a specific recollection of speaking with anyone at the ECB building? I don't. What were Samantha Klein's communications with the ECB building? I don't know. Were, what were Samantha Klein's communication with, EC, with the ECB building? Okay. And Thank her you. answer was, I don't know. Thank you. What were, what were Lisa Sutton's communications with the ECB building? I don't know. What were your co-counsel's communications with the ECB building. And when I say ECB building, I'm not talking about the structure, I'm talking about the individuals who worked there. Did I you? Don't. And just so we're clear here, you don't recall any communications with the ECB building staff as well, correct? You asked me if I had a specific recollection. I do not. Do you have a general recollection? I believe that at some point we subpoenaed the building's records of the uh, video from the lobby and elevator areas. So I would imagine that the communications would have to do with those subpoenas. Are you able to testify to any conversation you or anyone at your firm or your co-counsel had with the ECB building staff? I am sure that there were conversations and communications regarding the production of the subpoenaed documents, review of the subpoenaed documents, um, their compliance with, I believe it was Ms. Spector's subpoena that was sent, uh, our ability to review the videos, coordination of same. But I don't have a specific recollection of any communications. Are you able to speak to whether there were any conversations between you, anyone at your law firm or your co-counsel and ECB building personnel prior to your issuing the subpoena. Also, I don't believe that the subpoena was issued by our firm. As so, so, so you don't have a recollection of a subpoena being issued on Mr. Depp's behalf for the ECB building surveillance tapes? I don't know. I know there was one issued. I believe it was issued by Ms. Spector. Let's talk about the videos that you just referred to from the ECB building staff. How did you and your firm or your co-counsel receive these videos? I don't recall. I would imagine uh, like a, a, a e-file or something like that. Now, is it your recollection that there was just one e-file that contained all of the surveillance tapes? I don't have a recollection as to whether it was one or seven or what. I just don't know. When you were talking about receiving the video surveillance footage on whatever, whether it was one file or seven files, whether it was e-file or whatever, did you have any understanding 
that you were not provided the full amount that was requested, whatever the amount was? No. So you thought you received whatever you were supposed to receive, is that fair? Yes. What did you do with the actual surveillance video footage that you received? I believe we kept it on the computer at least for the next couple of months in preparation for trial. I don't know where it is now. That's my next question. Is there a time that you no longer possess the video surveillance footage that was sent to you by the ECB building? I don't know. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 2, and it's a multi-page document, um, and so I'm going to scroll down a little bit, but you, can, you let me know if I'm going too fast here. Um, it's dated June 3rd, and it's to Samantha Klein. She's with your first, she was working with you on the death case, correct? Correct. Okay. And it's from Samantha Spector, which you can see there, and we'll show you the signature later. Um, and it's litigation hold preservation of information, including <coughs> not limited to electronically stored information. Do you see that? Yes. Do you recall receiving this letter? And if you want me to scroll down and let you read each page, I'm happy to do that first. I'm familiar with this letter. I recall receiving it. <clears throat> And did you receive this letter before you received the surveillance footage from the ECB building? Um, I am not sure. Well, I think you had indicated that you thought that it was in June or July that you received the surveillance footage. Is that still your best recollection? I'm looking at the date and knowing the chronology of the case, it is my best estimate that we received this letter prior to the time that we received the video footage. Ms. Wasser. What steps did you and your firm and co-counsel take to preserve the surveillance video footage of ECB from the time you received it going forward? I think the absence of us doing anything to destroy the video footage would be the most I could testify regarding in terms of steps that we took to preserve the video footage. Are you aware of any destruction of the video footage, the surveillance video footage from ECB up to the present? No, I, I, we probably still have it. Have, have you looked for it? No. Have you been asked to look for it? No. I'm going to ask you to take a look at uh, what has now been marked as Washington Deposition Exhibit Number 3, uh, and it's dated June 6, 2013, addressed to you, and it's from Charles Carter. Did you have an understanding that Mr. Carter also represented Amber Heard? I did when I received this letter on June 6. Okay. And did you have an understanding that Mr. Carter was also asking you to preserve any evidence? Yes. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 4. It's dated June 6th as well, and it's to Charles Carter uh, from your firm. Uh, and you are acknowledging receipt of the preservation demand letter from Ms. Heard as well as his, uh, and you indicated we are fully aware of our obligations with respect to the preservation of evidence. 
please rest assured that we intend to comply with the preservation demand and expect that Ms. Bird will do so as well. Do you recall saying that in this letter? Yes. And was this letter, in fact, from you to Mr. Harder? It was. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit No. 5. It's a letter dated June 21, 2016 to Samantha Spector, Charles Harder, and Leonard Levine, I think it's pronounced, Remarriage of Death. And it's from Ms. Klein, Samantha Klein. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. And you are copied on it. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And Ms. Klein worked with your law firm? Yes. And represented Mr. Depp as well? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to go back up to the beginning to call your attention to a particular section. It says, this letter shall confirm the agreements we reached yesterday with respect to the pending domestic violence proceeding. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go down to the media press, and it says, neither party nor his or her respective counsel representatives or agents shall make any comments in the media or press pertaining to this dissolution action, the civil action pending against Doug Spinell, and or any pending or future litigation between or and or involving the parties. Do you see that? Yes. All right. Does that accurately reflect the agreement that was made between the parties with respect to Amber Heard and Mr. Depp and communications with the press? Yes. Do you know Liz Walters? Who? Liz Walters? Yes. And who is she? She is a reporter. For? I believe she works for her brother's online media outlet called The Blast. Did you have any communications with Liz Walters during the Depp Heard divorce? I don't recall. Did you have any communications with TMZ relating to the Depp Heard divorce? I don't recall. Now, do you recall what the date was for the permanent TRO, temporary restraining order? Do you recall the date that you said that early on, 21 days after the temporary restraining order, is typically the date that's set for the hearing for the defendant if they want to come in and oppose it or if the petitioner wants to extend it? Do you recall what the first date was? I don't, but I would imagine it was probably at some point in early June. All right. And then do you recall that date being continued? I do. How many times? At least twice, possibly three times. I think that the final date was at some point in August and we settled right before then. All right. Alan, can we bring up document number seven? Thank you. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser exhibit number seven. It is dated August 5, 2016. It is to you from Samantha Spector. Do you see that? Yes. Do you recall? Did you receive this document? But doesn't it say at the top that it's protected under 1152? It sure does. All I'm asking you is whether you received it. I'm not asking you about the substance. I don't remember. Do you have any reason to believe you did not receive it? I don't. 
Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser's deposition exhibit number eight. Uh, and it starts out with an email from Samantha Spector to Amber on August 6, 2016. Uh, do you recall what was going on on or around August 16 in this divorce, in connection with the divorce? Not specifically, no. Do you know who Christian Carino is? I do. Okay, who is he? He's an agent, a creative artist agency. How long have you known Christian Carino? I've known of Christian for maybe 10 years. Were you aware that Mr. Carino was involved in organizing, if you will, or assisting Mr. Depp and Ms. Hard with uh, uh, their own meeting to try to resolve their case up in San Francisco? Possibly. That sounds vaguely familiar. Were you on the telephone at any point while Amber Heard and John Depp were meeting to discuss attempted resolution, resolution of the issues during the summer of 2016? What was your question? Was I on the telephone? Yes. Were you on the telephone where Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard were in the hotel room and we're talking. No. Were you ever on the telephone when Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp were together talking during the summer of 2016, no matter where they were? On the telephone? Yes. No. While he was with Ms. Heard and Ms. Heard was on speaker, and you were on speakerphone with the two of them? No. Do you recognize the name on the Do you Joe, recognize the name on what? Joe Sweeney. I do. And who was he? Joe Sweeney is a forensic accountant uh, who specializes in family law forensic accounting, and he was Ms. Hurd's forensic accountant in the DISO matter. And was Edward White acting as the forensic accountant for Mr. Depp? No. Did Mr. White provide the documentation that was then submitted to Samantha Spector as counsel for Ms. Heard? I believe it came from Mr. White's office. Also probably of note is the fact that uh, Mr. Depp changed business management shortly before or during the course of the case. So it is possible that some of the documents came from predecessor business manager. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Wasser deposition exhibit number 10. And I'm not going to ask you any specific questions. So I don't need you to have to review it in detail unless you'd like to, and you're certainly welcome to spend as much time as you'd like on it but I'm just gonna go down to the end of it. And I'm going to ask if this is the deal point memorandum that you referred to that was finalized on August 15, 2016. Since the party's signatures appear at the bottom, as well as Ms. Spector's and mine, I believe that this is the deal point memorandum that to which I was referring. Okay. Is there any reason to believe that it is not the, the final deal point memorandum? No. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser deposition exhibit number 11. Uh, and it's a series of documents an FL-150, for example, and then that's page 404, and then it goes into the next 
part one of one. Just try to page through it for you just so you can see generally. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Could you tell me what it is, please? It looks to be one of the parties, I guess, Mr. Depp's, uh, what we call in California, preliminary or perhaps final declaration of disclosure. It's just financial disclosure forms. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you if you can take a look at what has been marked as Wasser exhibit number 12. And it's a um, many pages, I think it's 50 total. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Can you tell me what it is? It's parties related judgment for dissolution of marriage. Is there a specific amount that was paid to Amber Heard as part of this divorce settlement and judgment for objection document? I'm sorry. Me, for her claims of domestic violence, including any claims of assault, battery, intentional or negligent infliction of emotional distress, libel, slander, and or defamation. I don't believe that we segregated out what the total amount was being paid for. Did you make any effort to seal, S-E-A-L, the records in this case, and I'm referring to the case in front of us, the, uh, the, the, the uh, marriage or partnership of Amber Laura Depp and John Christopher Depp II filed in Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. When you say seal, do you mean by the court to ask the court to, the, the, to seal the file? Yes. I don't believe so. And why not? <laughs> we don't do okay. that. I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 13. And this is a subpoena of you for this deposition. Did you receive that? Do, do, you, want, do you want me to scroll through it? Would you like to? No, I, I, I believe that we received it. All right. And, and you are testifying pursuant to this subpoena, correct? I am. I'm going to ask you to look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 14. Um, and this is for the corporate designee of Wasser, Cooperman, and Mandos. You see that? I do. For today's deposition. Is it your understanding that you are the corporate designee on behalf of Wasser, Cooperman, and Mandos speaking today? Yes. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, giving the hour, that'll be all the testimony that you hear today, okay? So we'll go ahead and recess for the day. Make sure you don't do any outside research and don't talk to anybody, and we'll see you tomorrow, okay? Get some good rest, all right? Thank you. Tomorrow, then we'll be starting with that other deposition. That's correct. And how long is that, or approximately? About two and a half hours. So that'll take care of the morning, probably for the most part. And then you have remote witnesses after that. Is that correct? Okay. So you can get me the contact information for those, so we can get that taken care of. 
All right, just remember we do plan accordingly because I do need to take a lunch between 1.30 and 2.30 because there's a graduation I have to speak at, so we're going to take care of that, okay? All right, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right.